it's Bloodborne time. Getting ready to do uh, our fourth Halloween Sinister Run. Uh, assuming nothing uh, goes wrong in the world and uh, <laughs> and and video games are able to be played uh, October 30th, the 31st, and the 1st if we need it. We'll be uh, we'll be doing a sinister run, which is basically like a dried finger run uh, for Bloodborne. Uh, I'll be in New Game Plus. You don't have to be in anything. You can just be like a regular whatever. You know, I will be in New Game Plus. What you are in doesn't matter. You can invade the shit out of me. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We do it every year. Every year we do it. Um, it's great. This year, uh, I decided, I always put out like a, a video on YouTube that's like, hey, I'm getting ready to do this. My dog wants to come in here now, of course. Um, every year, we, uh, we do this, and um, it's a lot of fun. This year, I have decided that uh, instead of putting up a YouTube video that's like, hey, you know... Here's all I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play through Bloodborne and I'm gonna show you how to make a build real quick There are probably faster ways to make a build you probably know faster ways to make a build um, I Don't care. I'm just uh, I'm just showing people oh, yeah. How to do it the way I know how to do it if you know faster ways that's awesome well, And and you can right and place. and and please you know Yarnum let people know Let them know so, the first thing we're going to do is, uh, we're, we're going to make a quality build, right? And the reason we're making a quality build is because it lets us play with, like, a shit ton of weapons, and it's not hard to get gems for a quality build. Blood gems are basically, like, upgrades for your weapons, in case anybody doesn't know that. Uh, you put blood gems in your weapons, your weapon has three slots for blood gems... Uh, you slap those in there, and uh, away you go. Uh, in uh... Uh, I'm curious about something. I'm curious about something. Oh, man. Oh man. I was gonna name him Quentin because that's what I name my that's what I've been naming all my quality builds in Dark Souls. But I'm curious. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Alright, I like that better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um We'll give him edgy dude face. I like edgy dude face. It's nice. It's a nice face. All right. Uh So your origin is basically like your starting class. By the way, real quick. Holy shit, Marcus. Thank you for the gift subs. Marcus with the gift subs to Broheim, uh, you Drongo, Asnath Secret, uh, and Hero. Uh, thank you, Marcus. Holy shit. And, and Ark, thank you for the gift sub as well. God dang. I hope y'all are doing well. I hope everybody's doing good. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, like, I'm going to, I'm going to get to like a point where I, I'm, 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 I'm done talking and I can catch up with chat. So anyway, we're making a uh, we're making a quality build. These right here are essentially our um, our starting stats or right, whatever. I'm sure, I am sure there 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 might be a better starting class uh, for a, for a quality build. Um, but I I do military veteran. You can do whatever you like. I guess maybe milk toast might be good. It gets you ten endurance. Uh, as does military veteran, um, nine and eight blood tinge arcane, uh, we get seven and six 
All right, so like a lot of people who, who are going to run a quality build would like to have 15 arcane for beast roar, which is a, a, a tool, basically a spell. It's essentially force from Dark Souls. Um, I don't give a shit about it. I'm not, I'm not, I don't care. So I, I'm not taking, uh, I'm not taking, I'm taking military veteran. I don't care about arcane and it starts with less arcane. It, it gives me more points and strength and skill. I'm level 10. We're starting this, we're starting this off, baby. We're going, we're, we're doing this. It's a subtle reference. Yeah, it's a subtle reference in Smith shadow. <laughs> uh, Bob, wonder kindest, Zan, Rodrigo. As Nath Secret, Udrongo, uh, Ark, and Hero, uh, Marcus, of course, Wonderkindest, uh, Angry Sign Up, uh, Juice Butte, uh, Second Vignus, um, Epi, Bemused. Hunter Malcolm would have been a good one. Whatever happens, Swill Goo, hello. Beefiness, hello. Freezer, hello. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I've got nothing to talk about except making the build. So I guess we can kind of do like... I'll try and like run over some some lore shit. John, not my last name. Welcome back and thank you for one year. Uh, I don't like. I'm a big lore nerd. I'm sure most of y'all know that. Uh, I'm gonna put this on YouTube. I, I assume most. Well, a lot of my older YouTube videos were like trying to be like where lore meets invasions. You know. Anyway, the dream here that our uh, the dream here that we're we're having is. We've received this blood, and we're about to be infected by uh, the the curse of the beast. Um, but it's burned away from us, and uh, we're being protected by these messengers. Now, if you've beat Bloodborne, uh, you know that the messengers are essentially um, the the will of the Moon Presence, right? Um, the the messengers are like a physical manifestation of the Moon Presence's like desires and 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 wants ah, you found yourself a hunter. so the messengers come and protect us from the beast blood uh and then we hear the dolls say oh you found yourself a hunter so at this point we've we've uh we've acquired one item and it's the hunter's mark and we know that hunter's marks are etched into our fucking brain uh we are a hunter now we've been made a hunter by the moon presence um, and here we see the handwritten scrawl, Seek Pale Blood to Transcend the Hunt. And the guy said, Pale Blood, you say? Never heard of it. Uh, we, th this character, came to this dude and was like, Yo, I need, I need to know what Pale Blood is. And the guy was like, I have no idea what that is, but I can give you this magic blood right here, and it'll, it'll, it'll help you out. And uh, we were like, okay, cool. Uh, so we took the magic blood, it should have turned us into a werewolf monster, but instead, the messengers picked us up, and we feel nice. Unbearably light, holy shit, thank you for 1,000 bits. Much appreciated. God dang. Thank you. Uh. So. Now, at this point, we can die. It's no big deal, whatever. We can die, we can live, it doesn't matter. Um, we just have to get to the dream in order to... Uh, we just have to get to the dream in order to get our weapon. So if, 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 if I'm playing through the game and, and you see me, like, running through shit and, and I don't die, and then you play through the game and you do die, you know, don't, don't fret, it's no big deal. Um, just as long as... Just as long as we end up at the same place. That's all that really matters. I can smell their breath through the screen. Hell yeah. The messengers... Yeah, the messengers rule. They're our friend. I always... I, you know, you guys are... I love the suspenders. I love them. So anyway, we're gonna... We're gonna, we're gonna go to the dream. Uh, 
All right. Um, so, a quality build. Uh, everybody should know this, but a quality build is when you have like equal parts strength and dexterity, or in Bloodborne's case, strength and skill. Uh, in in a lot of the Dark Souls games, a uh, quality build is um, like 26 strength and 40 dexterity, or 40 strength and 40 dexterity. In uh, in Dark Souls games, typically, if you two-hand a weapon and you've got 26 strength, you get a modifier for two-handing. It's an old Dungeons and Dragons thing. Um, you get you get 1.5 times your strength if you're two-handing your weapon. So. Uh, Twenty-six strength is essentially forty strength if you're two-handing your weapon. All right, so we came here and uh, we found the hunter's dream. Uh, we came here via a lamp. Um, it's a very nice and peaceful place. We were allowed to pick a weapon. We were allowed to pick a gun. If you've never played Bloodborne before, I recommend the saw cleaver or the axe. Either one's fine. Um, the the threaded cane is a lot of fun. It's a really fun weapon, but maybe it's not maybe it's not great for your first time playing the game. Uh, now we've got weapons. We're uh, we're ready to go. We we get to awaken back in in Yarnum. Um, I'm gonna awaken back at the sick room. I'm gonna I'm gonna awaken at the first bonfire so that we can go back and talk to this NPC. She's gonna hook us up with a, a powerful blood vial. Um, you can you can talk to her over and over again until you open the door to the cathedral ward. Once you open that door to the church in the cathedral ward, you can't get any more of these blood vials. Uh, as as long as that door is closed, you can still get these blood vials though. Um. So she has she has closed off this door back here. Her name is Yasefka. She's like, I'm not opening the fucking door, but I'll give you this. I'll give you this uh, blood vial. It's very powerful. Um, no one can get in here. We're quarantined. Uh, you know, but enjoy this blood vial and and good luck on your hunt. Now we have a weapon and we can absolutely uh, smash the shit out of this werewolf. And he drops us a million blood vials, which is nice. Uh, da -da -ba -da. Don't you mean weapon? Don't you mean open? What are you talking about? Don't you mean pick a pee? What are you saying? What what words are these? All right. So, one thing that separates Bloodborne from every other game is the move sets. We're using these trick weapons, and so we have R ones. And you'll notice there's more animations on like. Just press an R1 and do an R1 spam. There's more animations than your typical Dark Souls weapon. All right, we still have R2s. Dark Souls 3 incorporated this. We can fully charge an R2 and do a strong attack. Uh, we can also press L1, and it will switch our weapon from one version of itself to the other. All right? So we can either have this quick axe, or we can have this slightly slower uh, saw blade type weapon. In Bloodborne, if you get hit, and you hit somebody back, you can regain some of your health that you've lost. Um, it encourages you to play pretty aggressively. Keep that in mind as you're fighting stuff. There's a trick to it, though. If, if I press R1, I'll regain a little bit of health. If I press R1, even if they're dying, I regain a little bit of health. If I press L1 while I'm attacking, if I press R1 and then I press L1, I do a transformed attack. My weapon does a different attack. These attacks are slower, but they do more damage, they do more posture damage, and they regain more health. This is true for pretty much every fucking weapon in the game. If it's not true for one particular weapon, it's, it's probably not even worth n knowing that. But, because it's so true for everything else. Anyway, it doesn't matter, we're, 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 on, our, we're on our way. The first thing we're going to do is upgrade our weapon. That's the most important thing, upgrading your weapon and buying blood vials. Everything else is fucking secondary. Leveling up is secondary. Levels, levels don't matter. I mean, you want vitality, obviously, but uh, more important than that is that we've leveled up our weapon. 
we need we need we need like to level up our weapon and to buy blood vials all the time. That's that's the most important thing. We're not doing the Wolfgate skip because it takes forever. <laughs> it takes forever to get it. Uh, it's a pain in the ass, and it serves no purpose, and it completely removes Eileen's quest line. I'm, oh god, I'm dead. <laughs> I was trying to parry that dude so I could be like, here's how you parry stuff, but maybe it's not a good idea. Maybe it's not a good idea to parry that guy. <laughs> Yeah, that's the other thing, alright? So, one thing in Bloodborne that is true for every Souls game is, um, their, their chat is talking about saw cleavers and saw spears and shit. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. In every Souls game, there's always people who are like, Oh, that weapon's OP! That weapon's OP! That weapon sucks! People that use that weapon suck! That weapon's OP! I... I typically don't give a shit However, like, legitimately, the quality build, like, has way too much fun stuff for you to do with it than to just use a fucking saw spear or a saw cleaver. Like, hey! Uh oh. Oh, shit! Haha, -ha, that did no damage for some reason. Probably because it was a bullshit hitbox. And you should feel bad. What is happening? Holy shit! I don't know how to play this game anymore, Chet. Oh my god. This is awful. Don't grab me, bro. This should not be this hard. It's just parrying. It's just you just parry the dude. That was too early. That was too... That was too early or too late. He did two attacks. God damn it! Fuck it! Alright, we killed this dude because sometimes he'll drop that. He'll drop a blood gem, and we need that. It's not great, but it'll get us through... It'll get us through this first part of the, the, the game. Alright. So... Ow. So now that we've got a blood gem, let's take a look at it. Wait. Not yet. Okay, now let's take a look at it. Uh, this is physical attack plus 2.1%. So, it's going to increase the damage of our weapon 2.1%. And if we look at our weapon, we see that it has three blood gem slots. So we're going to put three blood gems in it. We can't put any blood gems in it yet. Because we haven't leveled the weapon up. So we have to level the weapon up in order to open up gem slots for it. And then once we've opened up gem slots for the weapon, we're good to go. Bloodstone Shard is how we upgrade our weapon, so it's important that we come over here and grab this. Uh, there's another item over here, but it's been a minute, so I don't remember what the hell it is. But I think it's something not useful. So basically, if I get over here and this weapon, or this item's not useful, then don't come over here and pick it up. Wait, there's two items. That's bullets. That's not really useful. We don't really need those. And we can't get this one yet. Okay, so yeah, don't come here. Don't do this. Do as I say, not as I do. Oh, Jesus. You might have noticed we had, like, all the time in the world right there to press R1 and L1 and regain some of our health back. It's, it's easy to, like... It's easy to panic and and like just mash but like you have time 
Don't, you know what I mean? These dudes, uh, you can come through here and fight all 150 of them if you feel like it. I don't know why on earth you would. That item is not particularly useful. This dude's gonna drop bullets. I can't resist a plunge attack because I'm an idiot. Ah! Oh, I'm dead. Fuck! That's what I get for being a passive turd. I should have turned around and swung on those dudes. But I'm an idiot. Is this boss hard? Yeah, this is a hard boss. The boss of not being an idiot. I'm, I'm still trying to beat this boss. Some say that when you beat this boss, you, you level up forever, but I've, I've never done it. I don't know. Even when the enemies are dead, you can still hit them for a short time and you can uh, still regain health from them, which is a trick you might have picked up from uh, Dark Souls 3 with the Pontiff Eye Rings. You can, you can proc Pontiff Eye Rings off of dead enemies. Uh, it's the same in Bloodborne. It was actually the same in Dark Souls 2, um, which means it was probably the same in Dark Souls 1 as well. Uh, dead enemies in Dark Souls. Hitting a dead enemy still messed up the uh, the durability of your weapon. How did that not hit the other dude? Uh, oh, and also, hitting two people regains more health, obviously. Like, the more people you hit, the more the more health you regain. Alright, this dude has our blood echoes. We want those. There's that dope-ass accidental... From software jump. Because Miyazaki knew. He knew in his heart that if he was going to put a fucking jump button in these games, it should be the same button as run and roll and, and because it didn't have enough to do. You know, that one button didn't have enough to do already. It needed more shit to do. So it should also be the jump button. Thankfully, our Lord and Savior Yui Tanimura came and fixed that in Dark Souls 2, but nobody, nobody at Bloodborne Development got the memo on that. So it wasn't until Dark Souls 3 where we could finally, finally fucking remap our jump button to a button that made sense and was good. There's some oil urns over here. Which are actually uh, pretty useful. And this dude over here's got a torch. The animations in this game are just fucking top-notch. Um, if you've never played the game before, there's all these doors and windows that you can, like, talk to the, the citizens inside. Um, the citizens inside will, like, talk to you and, like, give you, you know, little essentially folklore lore <laughs> they'll tell you about shit that happens or whatever um we also have two paths here we can go this way or we can go uh the other way um i 
like I, I guess if you wanted to like speed through the game, you could take that path over there. I'm gonna take this one over here. It's a pain in the ass, but if I'm not mistaken, there's uh, bloodstone shards, and uh, the faster we get this weapon to like a plus three, the faster we can just melt fucking everything that happens. All right, so we've got dogs. Dogs suck. You know this. You've played a, you've played a Dark Souls game. Um, if you shoot them, they fall over. And if they fall over, they're not they're not jumping at you. And if they're not jumping at you, they are way less of a pain in the ass. So just shoot the fucking dogs. Dogs fall over from any blood tinge damage at all. Guns do blood tinge uh, blood tinge damage. However, there are also weapons that do blood tinge damage like the Chikage and the Blood Letter. And so hitting the dogs with those weapons will also knock them over. But none of those things is as easy as just simply shooting the fucking dog. Just shoot the dog. Also, what's up, Kanji? So there's another Bloodstone Shard. Uh, here we have two werewolves, and this is meant to be a sort of like, Hey, asshole, don't come this way. This is hard. <laughs> but are we going to listen to that? Of course not. We're idiots. I think those are pebbles. Or shining coins. One or the other. S pebbles. Yeah. Pebbles aren't bad. They don't do any damage. They're essentially just a... a they're just like a, Hey, get over here, dumb enemy item that we can use. So we can be like, hey, you dumb werewolf, I want to fight, I want to, I want to fight you, but I don't want to fight your friend. Alright, so the werewolves, you want to stick to their sides, or you want to parry one very particular attack they have. Uh, not that one. It's the slowest fucking attack they have. It's very easy to parry. Um, he gets all haunched up. And then he jumps at us. You can parry the shit out of that attack. Uh, if you're not good at parrying, or your bullets miss, you can just stick to their side or behind them. Either way's fine. But don't be in front of the werewolf. Never be in front of the goddamn werewolf, ever. That's that's the worst thing you can do. Don't be in front of the werewolf. That's your, that's your mantra. That's your life lesson. Don't be in front of the werewolf. You can backstab werewolves by hitting them with a fully charged R2 in the butt. And we got uh, blood vials, and we got um, a, uh, what do you call it? A thing. A shard. Straight ahead is a boss. He rules. But before we fight that boss, we're going to go in this dark room. We'll use our torch. Look at that dynamic lighting. Game of the year. Game of the year over here. Alright, if we come over here and we pick this item up, this dude's gonna shoot us in the fucking brain about it. No mercy. No mercy. We come up here, we open this door, we run straight ahead. There's a guy. I tried to, like, execute him on the stairs, but the game wouldn't let me do anything fun. It's fine. <laughs> and we got a shortcut, chat. Look at us. We're shortcut havers. Havers of the shortcut. Uh, color is spelled either way. Either way is fine to spell it. Alright, we can come in here now. And we can, uh, we can fight this boss. Let's hit this dude with a rock. No reason to fight him next to those birds. No reason to fight him next to those birds.
Birds are hyper annoying. Hyper annoying. We're gonna come in here. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fight this dude. He's gonna give us access to an item that you can use or you can't use. Whatever, up to you. I don't give a shit. Do whatever you want. Um. So we've got some oil urns, and we've got some Molotov cocktails. If you want to like do some massive damage to this dude to start off with, you can hit him with an oil urn and then hit him with a Molotov cocktail. I do this sometimes if I'm doing like a, a, a run with no weapons, or like a run where I have to wait and like get a weapon after I kill a boss or something, you know? It's fun. But honestly... Uh-oh. Look at that grab box. What is this, Dark Souls 2? Nice grab box, idiot. Get out of my way. Alright. The grabs do a shit ton of damage, and it's hard to regain your health back because uh, the, the, the grab animation takes so long, right? So in that situation, you're probably better off just backing off and healing. But don't, don't treat it like Dark Souls and back away and heal every time you get hit. Like, don't be afraid to get in there and hit somebody and get some of your health back that way. You'll save blood balls that way. Uh, and then the best thing ever... First of all, this soundtrack fucking rules. Let's just enjoy that. Uh, but also, this game has a limb break mechanic. And the more we hit an arm or a leg... Ow! The more fucked up it gets. And then the more fucked up it gets, the more damage it takes when we hit it. And when it, when it takes extra damage, he'll try and heal it so that it stops taking that extra damage. Which is the animation you'll see a lot of bosses do, where they lean over and they kind of screech, and then you see like this red effect go around them. Right there. Now, at first, you might get kind of discouraged, and you'd be like, oh man, he just killed all that damage I did. But, it's actually a good thing. Ow. What's not a good thing is this game has fucking 15 frames per second. <laughs> it's a good thing because... It's, it basically allows us to keep cycling and, and breaking limbs over and over again. And once we know, once we know how to like fight the boss, and we see what moves he does and what attacks he does over and over again, we can we can manipulate him, and we can make him do the things we want him to do. All right, so we just got uh, a bunch of blood echoes, which is this game's equivalent of souls, and we got a sword hunter badge, which means we can buy a new weapon if you want to. Um, I'm not going to uh, because I'm going to show you guys uh, basically a cheat. <laughs> But, it, but it's uh, it's an honest cheat. I got, you know what I mean? Like, it's allowed. So every time we, uh, every time we, we get a new badge, a new messenger appears in the bath, and they'll sell us new items. So, uh, that dude gave us a hunter chief emblem, and you, you lore nerds were asking me about this yesterday, who the cleric beast was. The cleric beast was the hunter chief. This is a, co a cloth emblem that belonged to the captain of the church hunters long ago. It opens the main gate that leads to the round plaza of the, grand, uh, the Great Cathedral. The main gate is shut tight on Knights of the Hunt, and can only be opened from the other side with this emblem. In other words, the captain's return and this emblem determined the end of the hunt. Except, for on this night of the hunt, the hunter chief 
became a cleric beast. And so he's not coming back. But we can take his handkerchief and we can use it to open that gate. However, we're not going to do that. Um, we're going to buy blood vials. So everybody always rants and complains about, like, I don't want to farm blood vials. You should never, ever in your fucking life, ever, ever, ever farm blood vials. You idiot. You absolute moron. You complete buffoon. Just buy them. Just buy them. It's much easier to farm blood echoes and then just buy blood vials. Buy blood vials. Buy all the blood vials. The more bosses you kill, the more expensive blood vials become. Uh, the messengers have new gifts for us. Uh, it's an old hunter bell. And uh, a beckoning bell. And a silencing blank. So we can do co-op now, if we want to. But we're not going to. Because we're going to beat Bloodborne all by ourselves. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to upgrade our weapon. But before we upgrade our weapon, I'm going to need blood echoes. So let's use these. It costs three bloodstone shards to get a plus one. We have a plus one now. We can fortify it uh, with a blood gem. Um, wait. Oh no, we need one more. We, we need one more upgrade before we can fortify it with a blood gem. I got really confused there. I was like, what the hell is happening? It doesn't matter. It's fine. Uh, we're going to start back at the great... No, we're going to start back at Central Yarnum. I'm really excited because... Playing a quality build means I get, like, access to, like, all the damn weapons. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And that's, like, the best part of Bloodborne, right? With all the dope weapons. Alright, so we have two options here. We can go this way, or we can go back through the giant werewolf dudes. Um, either way is fine. Do whatever you want. Exploration. Fun stuff. Oh, I thought that would uh, interrupt him. I was wrong. I get in the habit of not taking my my reposts, my viscerals after uh, after a parry. The reason I do that is because your visceral damage is tied to your weapon damage and how much skill you have leveled up. And anytime I'm doing one of those like stupid low-level challenge runs, I have no levels in skill. And so my viscerals suck ass. So I get in the habit of just not taking the visceral attack. Uh, but at low level, like this right here, it's fine. To take the visceral, it'll do. It'll do a bunch of damage. It's fine. I should. I should absolutely be taking the visceral. On my quality build, I got sad because I don't have fun hunter tools and scary guns. I mean, yeah. You can. You can absolutely make room for some hunter tools on a quality build. Um, and you can absolutely make room for, uh, you know, like a Gatling gun or a cannon, um, with a, and, and put a little bit of, ah, a little bit of blood tinge on it if you would like to. But, like, the, the hunter's tools are fun. It's basically like spell casting in this game. And, uh, and they're fun, but I, like... Having access to, like, all of the weapons. Not all of them. But having access to, like, a million billion weapons. Like, that's that's awesome. I love that. 
And we can, we can, it makes farming gems super easy, too. Oh. A hunter, are you? And an outsider. What a mess you've been caught up in. Basically, she tells us that she is a, a hunter of hunters. Um, she gives us a nice gesture, and she gives us some homeward bones, which in this game are called bold hunter's marks. I always forget, one of these is bloodstone shards, and one is the saw spear. Either one's fine or good. Use whichever, you know. Uh, we can we can pick up both. I honestly have no interest in getting the saw spear, but if you want it, you know, grab it. But you absolutely, like, there's no, there's no, I don't give a shit if you want to or not. You have to pick up the, you have to pick up the bloodstone shards. These dudes can drop bloodstone shards and blood vials. These dudes will always drop bullets. Uh, Epi redeemed do the Dungeon Master voice. Are you jealous? You should be, because I, Epi, have Phaser Wiener Nougats. Never heard of them? Degenerate. They are the best thing in planet to put in your mouth. Moment you put one inside your mouth, your taste buds are hit by orgasmic nougat. It feels like a kiss from a beautiful dog, and your mouth can't help itself but emit large quantities of spit. After that, you must have more and more. You'll eat a 24-pack of these in 10 minutes, savoring every piece. Are you jealous yet? Hey! You have to let me parry you. The blood vials are fine. Obviously, we would prefer to have the, uh, the other thing. Alright, so... Oh my god, that rat damage. Alright, there's our bloodstone shards, which means that one is the saw spear. I, I, I have no interest in getting it, but if you want the saw spear, it's over there. Go grab it. <laughs> um, there is also a... Uh, what do you call it? A thing. A thing, a thing! An insight. A madman's knowledge. What the hell's it called? Madman's knowledge. That that will get us one insight. We can use that to get the doll to wake up. But since we have four insight from killing the cleric beast, uh, the doll is already awake. We don't have to. We don't have to worry about that. What's insight? Insight is kind of like Dark Souls One humanity. Uh, you can use it to to buy the right to do multiplayer activities. An interesting an interesting thing just happened right there. I did a fully charged R two, and that dude shot me. Uh, but you might have noticed I had hyper armor. Every weapon has hyper armor on a fully charged R two. When you hear this noise, that sounds like a little bell. That's the, you have hyper armor noise now. Um, so you won't get interrupted if you hit something with an attack. However, obviously, you should definitely not just, like, try and trade. Because probably not worth it. But, you know, in that situation, you get shot and you hyper armor through the bullet and, uh, and you whatever. You get to do your fully charged R2. So we can actually just kind of, like, whoop, 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 whoop around here. And there's more oil urns. And then we can drop down on top of this thing right here. And we can, uh... Grab... Some more bloodstone shards. Um... From here... Man. Central Yarnum and Undead Berg and Boletaria are just... Incredible in their level design. There's so many places we can go, there's so many things we can do, and there really is no wrong answer. We just get to explore forever, and it rules. 
Is the doll Uden? No. Uden is formless. Any, if, if, if you can look at something in this game and see that it has, like... If you were able to look at something, it's not Uden. Because we play video games, we're, we're tempted to look for hints and things. Because video games are a visual medium. Um, but Bloodborne is uh, a work of Lovecraftian fiction, which means there are always going to be things that we just don't get to see. And that's the point. Uh, this little girl here will give us a music box that we can hear playing. And she tells us that this music box uh, belongs to... Uh, or it's, you know, it's a family... It's a family heirloom type thing that they play uh, for their father when he forgets who he is. Um, this, this girl is worried about her dad. Her mom went out to find her dad, and now neither has come back. She gives us the music box. And she's like, please go find my mommy. And we say, okay, because I'm a video game protagonist, and that's what I do. I go find little girl's parents. We opened up that shortcut, and you should recognize this area right here. This is the area right in front of the two werewolves. Uh, we're going to come back through here, but now we're going to go the opposite direction. We're not going to go to the werewolves. We're going to go this way, back to where we found those shining coins and those shards. We're going to break this box. We're going to pick up this shard. We're going to keep breaking boxes. Just absolute box destroyer. We hate boxes. Boxes, boxes killed our fucking dad, all right? Our dad died to boxes in a boxing accident. He was he was trying to he put on his boxing gloves and he and he went to he got in the ring to box the box and the box just fucking killed him, chat. Fucking boxed to death by boxing boxes. Look at that dude not taking fall damage. Oh, now he took it. Sorry. There was a little bit of lag. This game has really weird netcode. So sometimes... <laughs> it's a joke. I'm joking. There's no, there's no netcode involved in PvE. It's a joke. And boom! We got our clothes, chat. Uh, these offer much better defense, which is nice. And you're the guy on the box. Look at you, chat. You did it. Look, you're the dude on the box. It's you. You thought, you thought that the guy on the box was going to be the hero, and you were right. But what you didn't know was the dude on the box... It was you. You're the hero, chat. So if we pick up this item, these ladies will come to life and try and kill us. It's like ten bullets. I guess that's okay. Uh, you might recognize where we are. Uh, in case you don't, I'm going to come back over here and show you. Uh, this is the ladder we took up to the little girl. And the little girl gave us the music box. So we've basically made a cool circle. And we've picked up a bunch of items. We've got some cool armor. We've got some cool weapons. <laughs> Nothing but inquisitiveness here. Well, alright. I know there's an item in one of these little back alleys. 
I don't remember if it's a good item or not, but I, I just know that there's an item. There it is. Hey, it is a good item. It's a bloodstone shard, and we like that. Now, we have two options here. We can take this ladder. We can try and fight this giant fucking pig. It's up to you. It's up to you. I'm going to take the ladder because it's the safe bet. We come up here, and what we've done is we've explored, and we've earned a new shortcut. John Bloodborne earned a shortcut. So you'll recognize this area. The lamp is just ahead, right up there. That's where the lamp is at. We, we ain't need no stinking lamp, not yet. We've got our shortcut, it rules. This is a this is a really nice place to This is a really nice place to to farm blood vials. Or not blood vials, blood echoes, I'm sorry. If if you find yourself stuck and you need more blood vials and you need to buy more blood vials and you need some blood echoes, this is a really good place to like you can kill those two dudes, then you can come over here, you can kill all these dudes, and you can kill this pig, and uh, it, it'll 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 get you a lot of blood echoes, and you can use those blood echoes to buy more blood vials. In the early game, later in the game, things get more expensive, and killing these dudes doesn't do much for you. Uh, as is tradition in Dark Souls, we backstab the pig in its butthole because Miyazaki has some shit he needs to work out. The pig will drop us blood vials, uh, but here we also get the Saw Hunter's badge. And remember what we said about badges. They unlock new things for us to buy. They're in our key items. They never go away. Owning these makes new messengers appear in the bath and sell you new things. This is the badge of a workshop-sanctioned hunter. Crafted long ago at the workshop, it attests to one's prowess as a hunter of beast. The workshop is gone, and no group recognizes this meaningless badge, except the messengers in the bath, who understand its profundity. Certain things can only be entrusted with a hunter in possession of the badge, or so they believe. So there we see the hunter's, uh, the saw hunter badge, and here we have the sword hunter badge. These things allow us to uh, buy weapons and items from the messengers. Uh, it's always worth picking these up. These are essentially very important key items that will allow us to buy uh, buffs, and uh, weapons, and armor, and cool shit like that. So if we come up here, um, badges are like ashes. That's a very good, there you go. If we come up here, that dude accidentally sets himself on fire like an idiot, putting himself at one HP, and they bowled, and they rolled up. Did they get a strike? It looks like they got a strike. Look at it. They got a strike. They killed everybody for us. So we get some blood vials for that. We also got some blood echoes for that. Uh, if and, and like I said, if you're playing the game and you're kind of stuck and you need more blood vials and you're you're early in the game, that's a great place. It's a great place. You can just do that a few times and you'll have blood echoes out the butt. And then and then you can use those blood echoes to buy more blood vials. These dudes, if we sneak up on them, we get this dope backstab. takes the one dude out. And these dudes drop us bloodstone shards and blood vials, and there's a hunter's mark right here. Homeward bone, bold hunter's mark, whatever. Uh, and now we get to fight Gascoin. Now, if you want to be an absolute turd, you can equip the music box. Uh, you have two options here. You can put it in your personal effects, which is what you get when you press the um, the options, not the options button, but when you touch the touchpad, it brings up your personal effects. Um, or if you want to, you can put it here in your quick items. Uh, one, it, it can't be in both, but it can be in one or the other, just whichever one you think is easier to use. Um, so we'll come up here and Father Gascoin 
Vadi Vidya has poisoned all of your fucking minds, and you think that Gascoigne has killed his wife. You are all wrong. You are all wrong, and you have always been wrong. Gascoigne did not hurt his wife. He came here, and these beastie dudes have killed his wife. And he's taken her body, and he's put it up on the on the roof, and uh, and he's lost his goddamn mind. And he's killing these villagers who who killed his wife. This is you can't change my mind. Beasts all over the shop. You'll be one of them. Soon or later. You believe whatever you want to believe, but my my belief is the truth. <sighs> Wake up, sheeple! Alright, so Gascoin is our first humanoid boss. We've already fought a beast boss. We're gonna run up these stairs because it's easier to fight him on this flat level playing ground. He's a he's a humanoid, so we can do parries. We can also backstab him if we get a chance to. He's an absolute cheater. He uses a blunderbuss and he reloads it. And he's using a two-handed axe, and somehow he manages to do all of that shit. Uh, with two hands. Motherfucker. Like a fucking Hindu elephant god with 14 hands. We just can't see him. That's the real Lovecraft. Is we can't see this dude's m mystical elephant hands. Um, his gun does damage, as you can see. And that sucks, but whatever. Now we can use the music box three times. When you use it, it kind of freaks him out. You can sneak behind him. You can do a backstab. At about halfway through his health, he wants to transform into a big, uh, giant beast. If you're standing too close, he'll knock you down. So, run away from him, and then run in after the scream and get the backstab. Now, at this point... At this point, we're supposed to be learning that when you dodge in Bloodborne, it's best to dodge in. Dodge forward. That way you can counterattack. If you need to use the music box there, you know, you can. It, it makes it go fast, but... You should be able to beat that dude without the music box. So, uh, we got the red jeweled brooch. We've got, uh... We've got a text message. Okay. And we got a, um... And we got a key to Uden Chapel. Danga JM, welcome back, and thank you for 35 months. The glove does not fit. You must acquit. Thank you. Yes. Gascoin did nothing wrong. All right. Uh, now, at this point, remember me telling you about the, the blood vial? What we're about to do is going to make it where we can't get these blood vials anymore. So if, you've, if you used this blood vial already, before you do the next thing, go get one more blood vial. This is your last chance to get it. You can only have one, and she will not give you another if you still have one in your inventory. So, so if you've got one, you're done. Um, but if you used yours already, this is your last chance to go back to Yusefka's clinic and pick up another one. You're not going to get another chance. Here, we pick up the workshop tool. It's 
fancy uh, key item. It enables the fortification of weapons with blood gems. It's a misplaced workshop tool from the Hunter's Dream. The hunter who retrieves this can fortify weapons by kneading blood gems into them. Blood gems add properties to weapons when used to fortify them as blood defines an organism. So remember that blood gem that we got from that big guy? We can use that now. Very uh, interesting cutscene, kind of showing us um, the church. And it's an odd place for a cutscene, especially in a From Software game. But what it does is it shows us the importance of the Cathedral Ward. This is going to kind of act as our Firelink Shrine. And so they needed that to be important. Uh, instead of a big bird flying us here, we had to fight our way here. We had to fight our way here. We had to deal with two bosses to find our sanctuary. And it's this church here. This this area, everyone says that the dream is the hub, and that's true. But the dream is not your Firelink Shrine. This area right here, this is your Firelink Shrine. Uh, we have this, this uh, little ch church dweller here. This is literally the only good person who has ever existed in any From Software game. Like, this dude and Skurver from Demon Souls. But even Skurver can be a dickhead. This dude is just 100% certified sweetie. Hmm? Oh, you must be a hunter. Very sorry. The incense must have masked your scent. Good, good. I've been waiting for one of your ilk. These hunts have everyone all locked up inside, waiting for it to end. It always does. Always has, you know. Since forever. But it won't end nicely. Not this time. Even some folks hiding inside are going bad. Screams of women folk. The stench of blood. The snarls of beasts. None of them's too uncommon now. Yarn them's done for, I tell ya. Angry Sign Up says, What about Big Fat Baby Man from Sekiro? And yeah, you're right. about this here Erden Chapel. They'll be safe here. The incense wards off the beasts. Spread the word. Tell them to come on over. If you wouldn't mind. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Big Fat Baby Man from Sekiro and Church Dweller. Like, that's it. They're the best. They're the best. Um, so, we've got, uh, we've got our Firelink Shrine now. We've got our, we've got our, our home, our home base. We're gonna return to the Hunter Dream. We're gonna upgrade our weapon. And we're gonna put that Blood Gem inside of it. And it's going to massively increase our damage. Um, this is a thing that I take for granted. I, I never think to do. Also, uh, our waifu level up lady is alive now. Uh, if you want to level up. But you don't want to level up. Because leveling up doesn't matter. It's not important. Alright, we're going to fortify our weapon. Fortifying it, interestingly, automatically improves its durability. This weapon needs to be repaired. Right? Right? It needs 47 blood echoes to repair it. If you fortify a weapon, if you take a weapon from plus zero to plus one, or plus one to plus two, etc., it automatically repairs it. You don't have to repair it, so don't waste the money. We're going to fortify it. Boom. We have a plus two saw cleaver. Now, we're going to use that blood gem, fortify weapons using blood gems. We're going to put this bad boy in it. And look at that. Look at the damage increase, chat. From 11 to 14. Incredible. Incredible. The next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to buy some more blood vials. Uh, by the way, you can't check how many blood vials you have in this game, which is a silly, stupid 
thing. I don't know why they did that. If you want to know how many blood vials you currently possess, come to the bath messengers and act like you're going to buy some. That's the only way you can check. Uh, we're currently holding 20, and we have 84 stored in our inventory. Blood vials and quicksilver bullets are the only items that restore themselves from your inventory. Everything else... Say you had, say you had, you know, 10 antidotes and 99 stored. If you used those 10 antidotes and you wanted to get 10 more from the 99 stored, you physically have to come here and use this bottomless box and get them out. D just a terrible, terrible design decision. I understand why they did it, because they want you to feel like this is your home base, this is your workshop, this is where you do hunter shit. Uh, but there's no getting around the fact that it's just not good video game design. It's just not. And that's all there is to it. And you can't change my mind. I have to take a very quick restroom break. Chat, I'll be right back. And uh, we'll... we'll... Alright, we're back. Uh, I have coffee. And I have used the toilet for my urine. So now it's time to continue on our adventure. Our adventure continues. But before we make progress, we are going to um we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go back to Central Yarnum there. And we have two side quests that have opened up. Um we have the church dweller who is asking us to send people to him uh to protect them on the night of the hunt. And do you remember Yosefka and how she was like Oh, no one can come in here. I'm quarantined. I'm quarantined in this bitch. All right. Well, now she seems to have changed her tune as well as her voice. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Uh, she tells us now. Oh well. Hello. Splendid. Let me ask you a small kindness. You're soon off to hunt, I presume. Then, if you find any survivors, tell them to seek Yusefka's clinic. Upon my Hippocratic Oath, if they are yet human, I will look after them. Perhaps even cure them. This sickness, these beasts, they are not to be feared. This time the night is long. I may be trapped here, but I should do something to help. I'll even offer a reward for your cooperation. Tempted? Well... Off you go, then. Now, I don't remember exactly, because I'm not a monster who sends people to this monster to die. But I think if you send people here, she gives you, like, beast blood pellets in exchange for sending people here. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's imposter Yusefka. She is absolutely acting sus. And, uh, we need to have an emergency meeting right now. Uh, she claimed, she claimed to be doing the oxygen tanks. But the lights went out, and when, when the lights came back on, uh, Werewolf was dead. And she's the only one who was in the same room as him. So, you know. Vote Yusefka. She gives you mist. What is mist? Also, we have Gilbert here. He's a nice guy. You must be a hunter, and... Um... Not one from around here either. I'm Gilbert, a fellow outsider. You must have had a fine time of it. Yarnum has a special way of treating guests. Well, I don't think I could stand if I wanted to, but I'm willing to help. If there's anything that can be done, <laughs> this time is cursed. Whatever your reasons might be, you should plan a swift exit. Whatever can be gained from this place, it will do more harm than good. Alright, so he tells us he's also an outsider. He's also sick. Uh, it seems that he came here to get the uh, the blood treatment. If we talk to him enough, he'll give us a flame sprayer. Also notice... Ah, you needn't concern yourself with me. I'm afraid I'm of little help now. But before I... take this... I make no use of it, but perhaps you... <coughs> me was incurable, but this time gave me hope. Their strange blood bought me time. I was most fortunate. Unharmed by the plague of beasts, I can even die human. <coughs> I'm not doing a Gilbert impression. 
<laughs> I swallowed my coffee wrong. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, uh, with tears in my eyes, I continue. Um, holy shit. <clears throat> Just swallow the coffee, idiot. Kaiser K, welcome back. Thank you for 30 months. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, so Gilbert gave us a flame sprayer, uh, which is pretty cool, but it requires eight arcane to use it, so we're not going to be able to use it. Um, but if you are one of those people who's going to put some arcane on your, uh, on your build, then, you know, there you go. Have at it. Uh, I'm trying to remember the quickest way to get back to Gascoin's kid. Uh, I think we're probably better off going this way. This is a this is a brand new character, Arrow Student. I haven't even leveled up yet. We're still level ten. Um, so if you're watching this vod or you're watching this video on YouTube, uh, I think it's probably fairly safe to assume that uh, you you might be a a, a a PvP nerd like myself. You might enjoy invasions and stuff. One thing that's interesting about Bloodborne is you just cannot get invaded until you're level thirty in this game. Uh, you, you cannot invade people who are under level 30 unless they have rang their sinister bell. But no one does that. <laughs> um, nobody is level, like, you know, nobody's like level 20 running around ringing their sinister bell unless they're, like, unless they're trying to get invaded by people who don't know that you can't, you know what I mean? Like... Even if you were trying to be like a quote-unquote anti-twink, it still wouldn't make sense for you to do it, because everybody knows they can't invade anybody who's less than 30. Oh, did I get a Dungeon Master voice? Sorry. Uh, Magnaspa has... Magnaspatha has redeemed do the Dungeon Master voice. Father Gascoin killed his wife. Vati got it right. Y'all are simping for a murderer on the word of a slug worshipper. So, we found the jeweled brooch. So, now that we've told her that she's an orphan, we have two options. Well, three, really. Well, damn it, she's just gonna cry. Wait, maybe if I quit and reload, she'll stop crying? We might have to talk to, uh, the church dweller again. But I don't think we do. This should work. Unless I'm wrong. Which I might be. Who knows? You do. You know. In the future. Ten seconds from now, you already know the answer to this question. Simply send the answer back. And tell us. Was I right or was I wrong? Well, it turns out... It turns out... Oh my god! <laughs> I'm so used to playing games on PC and the loading screens are like... <sniffs> oh shit. I don't know what the hell I've done, chat. I have absolutely butchered this. Whoops. Whoopsie daisy! <laughs> All right, um... I didn't tell her where to go, so there's no telling where she's at. 
if you tell her to come to the church, she comes here and she gets she gets she gets et by the pig. Uh, if you tell her to go to the Yusefkas, she gets turned into an alien. I have done neither of those things. So she should not be in the belly of this pig. And yet she is. Interesting. Usually, she asks. She's like, is there some place I can go? And you get a choice. You can tell her. You can go to Yosefka's clinic, or you can go to Uden Chapel. Um, for some reason, we did something strange there, and uh, she just decided to go to... She just decided to go to the... Uh, She just decided to go to the chapel herself. I don't know. Saint does an oopsie. Maybe because you don't have the option to send her to the clinic? But I, I do, don't I? The church dweller said, send him to this here Uden Chapel. Uden, Uden Chapel. Send him to this here Uden Chapel. Maybe, maybe it's because, yeah, now, this, uh, this actually opens up the third option. This actually opens up the third option for this quest, which is somehow even more sinister. Yeah, remember what I asked. If you send any survivors, send them here. Yeah. He's already told me this. Alright. <clears throat> so, at this point, we have different things that we can do. Um... If, if you have the Blood Echoes, you can simply go and buy the Hunter Chief Emblem. And you can open up all these... You can open up all these gates. If you don't want to spend that money on the Hunter Chief's Emblem, you don't have to. Uh, you can you can you can go the other route. I choose to go the other route. Uh, so we're gonna go this way towards Old Yarnum. So we got some new clothes. They look fresh to death. It's really only a different jacket. It's the exact same pants and gloves, but instead of having the cool hunter hat, you can have um you can have a uh a top hat. Then we meet this dude. He's a big mean giant. Now, he has a couple of attacks. like that one that expose a bone in his leg and if you hit that bone you can take that critical on him oh shit Uh, if you have the Hunter Chief emblem, you can unlock this door, and you can skip everything that we're about to do. However, I would urge you not to skip everything we're about to do, because it's going to allow us to get a bunch of Blood Echoes, it's going to allow us to get a bunch of weapon upgrades, uh, and all of these things are super important and nice and good. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here. Uh, this dude is just minding his own business, enjoying the view, right? This guy, he'll see us. And uh, he'll come fight us. So we fight this guy one on one. Bow nine.
Now, this dude looks like he's ripe for a backstab, and he is, but you have to time it out, like, perfectly, because he's surrounded by birds. But if we get just right... We can grab that backstab, and we get a monocular! Look at us go, chat. It allows us to see things. We can play first-person Bloodborne if we want to. In case 15 uh, frames per second didn't make you sick enough, now you can play in first-person view. Uh, this giant over here is an absolute badass... Uh, and, and just a total dickhead. Um, he is guarding, kind of, uh, the Bloodborne equivalent of a Titanite lizard. Um, I don't know if this will work, but we're going to try it. This dude sucks, and he might per potentially one-shot me with that giant fucking ball of his. We'll see if this... Just a fucking dickhead. <laughs> oh my god. And now he's got my blood echoes. Because that's a thing. <laughs> I wanted to kill the guy. Turn the game off. Reload it. And see if the Titanite... Or they're called s s Skittering Madness. Or Wandering Madness. They're called something like that. They're not Titanite bugs. I'm going to be call them. I'm going to be calling them Titanite bugs. So just get over that and accept it. Uh, I don't know if that works or not. I don't know if we can just turn the game off and reload it, and the Titanite bug will reappear. But maybe it does. That does work. Chat says it does work. Sporkwad says to wear the top hat, but I don't want to wear the top hat. Um. I like I like the hunter hat. Okay, now everyone in chat is just saying it does work. Yes, it works. It works. It does. Yeah, that works. It does work. Yes, Saint. All right, chat. We get it. It works. It works. <clears throat> The, the top hat is nice. It's good fashion. I'm not hating on the top hat. The top hat would even look cool on my character because he's a dope-looking, edgy guy. You know? It looks good. I'm not saying... But I want to be the guy from the box, chat. I want to be the Bloodborne man. Also, uh, COVID-19. We need face masks. Wear your masks, you fucking idiots. Look at all that health I just regained by using the, the, the L1 attack. The L1 attack got us so much, so much HP back. Alright, now we have to not die to this guy. Mother... Mm. Oh, fuck me. Oh, I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. All right. He was kind of bugged out, and I kept thinking, like, okay, he's not going to... He's not going to attack. It, it, you, should, you should never do what I just did. I'm so stupid. Just fuck... You just wait... You just wait, and then you counterattack. That's all you gotta do. That's all you have to do. It's very simple. But I didn't do that, because I am dumb. And I have... Uh, I have an inability to just stand still and mind my own business. Because I constantly feel like I have to be jumping into action and doing stuff. 
but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we'll we'll just try and do it right this time. Also, right about now. Right about now would be a good time for us to be leveling up our our vitality. See how easy that was? Don't be dumb. Just just pick your shots and counterattack. It's super easy. It's super easy and I was dumb to do anything else. Uh, alright, but we, 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 we got three bloodstone shards over there, um, and there's even more. There's even more bloodstone shards for us to be getting, which is why we're doing this. Um, it's okay to, you know, we, like, everybody always wants to level up. Leveling up is not that big of a deal. It, it would be nice to have some extra vitality right now, but the most important thing is that we have, uh, uh, the highest upgrade weapon possible. Also, nice, nice, nice flying there, idiot. I'm curious if we can come over here and this dude won't notice us. It appears that that is the case. Alright, so we want to hit this dude. And then, I don't know how the hell you're supposed to fight this giant dude. With his big ass ball and chain. There we go. He drops us a bloodstone shard. There's five bloodstone shards right there. That's a lot of bloodstone shards. We're going to exit. We're going to reload. And uh, there is a titanite bug here who, if I'm not mistaken, drops us twin bloodstone shards, which is uh, how you get from plus three to plus four uh, and, and up to plus eight, I think. Um, it's, it's entirely possible that I am misremembering and misspeaking on little details and things and if I am I apologize but uh, I, my brain only has so much fucking knowledge in it you know what I mean I'm gonna mess some stuff up okay <laughs> I, I apologize if I misspeak and say things like oh twin bloodstone shards go from plus three to plus four and you're like no saint they go from plus four to plus five <laughs> we get it I'm wrong sometimes Also, I was wrong about him even dropping twin bloodstone shards. I'm just, I'm just a fool. I'm just a fool, chat. I'm just an idiot. Why are you watching this video? And I obviously don't know what I'm talking about. Did you know that if an inn's door could open and you'd be in a cleric beast on the other side, a door don't open? Did you know? Did you, did you know? Take me out, chat, by Franz Ferdinand, I think. <laughs> Alright, uh, so what do we do against dogs, chat? We, we. We shoot him. <laughs> ah! I locked onto the wrong thing. Because this game hates. Alright. Alright, now. I, I, I'm, I'm doing all this, like, lore shit, all this, you know, and you guys, maybe you're like, oh, why, 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 why are you doing this? 
I just want to know how to PvP, bro. Why are you doing this? Uh, you're about you're about to see how lore and PvP combine to form a video game. You shit god gamer. My dog heard me in here killing dogs, and now my dog walks in and he's like, Hey, you okay? You okay? You aren't thinking about anything, are you? You're a good boy, Bear. You're a good boy. Alright, so this dude is lore. Uh, but this dude is also PvP. Uh, we need this dude. This dude will give us a covenant. A covenant is basically a, a rune that you can wear that aligns you with a specific group of players and... Uh, makes you antagonistic towards another group of players. Doing this quest is how we get the Executioner Rune. The Executioner Rune doubles uh. your potential PvP. Because now, if you are wearing the Executioner Rune, and you get summoned into a world where someone is wearing the Corruption Rune, the Vile Blood Rune, you now hate each other and you fight. You fight about it. Because it's cool. It's a cool idea for a Covenant. It's a cool idea for Mechanic. But in order to do it, You're we got to do the lore. Starter, you? I knew it. That's precisely how I started out. Oh, beg pardon. You may call me Alfred, protege of Master Ligarius, hunter of vile bloods. So, what say you? Our prey might differ. If we are hunters, the both of us, why not cooperate and discuss the things we've learned? Oh, very good. Very good indeed. Take you might notice this is the same voice actor who plays Solaire. Beast hunting is a sacred practice. May the good blood guide your way. All right, so he gave us some fire paper and he gave us some uh, he gave us a gesture. And you'll notice he is here at this statue uh, of someone wearing armor very much like himself. Except that person is wearing a big uh, bell on their head. And they look like a terrifying war god. And uh, we'll learn more about that later. If you talk to him, that character there will tell you a little bit about the Executioners and their holy, sacred uh, uh, crusade against Cain Hurst and, and the Vile Bloods and, uh, and Martyr Logarius. So we open up that little gate, it opens up this casket, this casket takes us down into Old Yarnum. Old Yarnum is, uh, it's, it's like New Yarnum, except older. Uh, and essentially, uh, it's a, it's a peek into what, what, what happened. Remember werewolves, Chet? What did we say? Don't be in front of them. That's it. Just don't be in front of the damn werewolf, and you're good to go. Never be in front of a werewolf. If you're behind the werewolf, it can literally do nothing to you at all. But uh, yeah, Old Yarnum has a uh, has a violent, strange history. Ooh, spooky. I'm I'm I know it sounds like I'm being ironic, but like no, I, I legitimately love this area. It's great. Uh, we're also if we come over here, we get some antidotes. I think aren't there antidotes? Apparently, it was pungent blood cocktail. I could have sworn it was antidotes. Did I miss some antidotes? I must have missed some antidotes, right? There we go. Some antidotes. We're going to put those right here. Wait. There we go. We're going to put those in personal effects one, and if I need to use them, I can just press the touchpad, and then boom, right there, antidote. All right, so before we do this, we are going to read this note on the door. This town is long abandoned. Hunters not wanted here. Now we're going to go back to the dream. I'm going to use my blood. I 
Thankfully, all the enemies here are going to drop blood vials, so, and I've bought a bunch of blood vials. So, I'm going to be okay on blood vials, but uh, if you're new and you've not played the game before, and, or, or if you're just not very good at it, and you're trying to make a PvP build and you're trying to rush through it, then don't be afraid to buy uh, 28 more blood vials. You know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid to buy blood vials. Never farm the damn things. Just buy the goddamn things. I've got a hundred and... 21 blood vials right now. You should, you know what I mean? You can have a million billion blood vials at this point. Uh, I'm going to level up. You don't have to level up. It's more important that you have blood vials than you level up. I'm also going to fortify my weapon because that's more important than anything. Alright, so we've got a plus three saw cleaver now. Uh, we need twin bloodstone shards in order to uh, upgrade it further. Uh, so at this point, we just have a bunch of... Uh, bloodstone shards that we can't really do anything with, right? Um, you can upgrade your gun if you want to. I don't recommend it. There's really no reason to do it at all. Uh, but we are going to put another blood gem in our in our saw cleaver. Uh, this one, both are just getting our HP up to 17. I'm sorry. Both are just getting our attack up to 17, but this one gives us HP, continues to recover, plus one, so obviously it's the better of the two. All right, and uh, oh, also, we have insight now, so we can buy stuff from the messengers if we wanted to. This allows us to be summoned into other players' world and help them. This allows us to invade other players' worlds and kill them. Uh, they're also selling the uh, the the wardrobe of the boss we killed, so keep that in mind if you need if you want some dope new fashion you can you can get it at the the messenger shop Hello, I am a doll. uh very well let the echoes become your strength let me stand close now shut your eyes she's the best chat vitality vitality Vitality! <laughs> That's it! Just vitality! If this is your first time making a Bloodborne PvP build, um, you're gonna notice we don't level up Endurance at all. It's, it's really, really not necessary in Bloodborne. If you, if you feel like you want some Endurance, go ahead and level it up. To like 15 but that should be the last fucking thing you do that should be the last thing you do get your strength to 50 or 40 get your we're making a quality build remember we're gonna get our strength to 50 or 40 and we're gonna get our skill to 50 or 40 and then after that maybe we put five levels in endurance maybe if we want to but before we do any of that shit it's just vitality the the weapon upgrade is going to carry us the weapon upgrade is going to carry us farther than any strength or skill could ever hope to do. Vitality. 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 Just level endurance, says Lord Commander. Listen to Lord Commander. He knows what he's talking about. <laughs> I followed your advice, but I never found a weapon which scales the vitality, so my damage is no good. Well, I've got good news for you. Demon Souls is about to come out. And you can use the Northern Regalia on your on your Vitality build. So, Old Yarnum, long abandoned. No hunters wanted. This homie right here. I love his I love his voice. I love it. You there! Hunter! You there! Hunter! Turn back at once. Old Yarnum, burned and abandoned by men, is now home only to beasts. They are of no harm to those of us. Turn back, for the hunter will face the hunt. So, uh, I mean, you heard the man. He couldn't be more clear. 
So we see these uh, beasts. We see all this like burning fire and stuff. And uh, if we've been paying attention to uh, item descriptions, we know that beasts are afraid of fire. So having a torch out will keep us from having to fight a lot of enemies uh, right here. First thing we're going to do is drop off this and grab these. And then the next thing we're going to do is save and reload because there's a Titanite bug here. And he ran off. He ran off! Well, I mean, look, at a certain point, we're going to start leveling up strength and skill. But that's... That's so far... Like, you know what I mean? It, it's just easier if you have more hit points. <laughs> Forehead. Just have more hit points. Just don't get one shot, forehead. This game is so much easier if you can afford to get hit a couple times. Where the hell's the thing? Did he not come down here? What a jerk. What a jerk that thing is. It doesn't matter. We'll get it later. We're going to come over here. We're going to get an upgrade to our torch. Uh, we'll notice these little beastie guys right here. They've got hoods on their head, so the torch trick doesn't work on them. Also notice how when they hit me, uh, I start taking uh, poison buildup. So now we've got the hunter's torch. It actually does more damage. Uh, and it has more durability. And it has better scaling than our regular torch. It's, it's just better in every way. If you wanted to do some speedrun strats, you can, like, glitch the game right there. Like, by jumping down and quitting out of the game inside the, the, the level's geometry. But I'm, I'm not... I'm not... I'm not the one, chat. I'm making a new skill build and I've fallen in love with Rakuyo. Before I picked it up, I saw people do with it is spam R1 and spin to win spam. But it has much more to offer. Uh... I mean, sure, probably. But, like, that... That spin to win as you call it, um, does a shit zillion damage and has hyper armor. So, like, of course that's all anybody uses. And, like, even if you find somebody who plays, like, masterfully and beautifully with the Rakuyo, 10 to 1 odds says if you start whipping their ass, they'll immediately bust out the hyper armor spin attack. <laughs> But, as I stated at the beginning of this video, or this playthrough, uh, people always, there's always that one, th you know what I mean? Like, every player has that one thing that they bitch about, and they're like, man, that shit's so cheap. In, in Bloodborne, you can pretty much make every weapon, uh, bonkers. You know what I mean? Like, with the exception of, of a few weapons, you can make... Nice game. Nice game, idiot. Nice ragdoll corpse. 10 out of 10. With the exception of a few weapons, you can make a you, you can make like almost every weapon in Bloodborne an, an absolute murder house. If you like something, it, just like it. You know what I mean? Who gives a shit? Having said that, if you use the saw spear you're the worst. Use whatever you like. And don't let other people make you feel bad about it. Unless you use the saw spear. In which case, uh, you should uh, fucking feel terrible about all of your life decisions. And I bet your family doesn't love you. It's a joke! It's a joke, chat! Kind of. Kind of. It's kind of a joke. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not a joke. Maybe it's real. Who can say?
So, uh... We're ducking behind, like, walls and hanging out in the shadows here. And the reason we're doing that is because if we don't... We get fucking gun murdered. By Jura, right? Fortunately, it's not too difficult to avoid... We're going to come over here. Take a little bit of fall damage, but that's okay. Get our torch out. Look at that torch. Look at it go, Chet. All right, we're going to be quiet. Oh, we weren't quiet. We weren't quiet, Chet. Oh, look at him go. Mmm. Oh! Stay away! 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 Gotta hate you. Uh, we're doing all this for a reason. Uh, I guess, you know, one reason is these dudes give us blood echoes and, uh, other stuff blood vials and, and, and blood gems and, and stuff. So that's always worth. But also over here, uh, there's some some armor that we can pick up, as well as uh, uh, a new a new badge or a new weapon? I forget. A new weapon. So now we got the rifle spear. Fun fact. The rifle spear... As its name suggests, uh, can shoot bullets. And used to, when the game first came out, you could put arcane blood gems in the rifle spear. And when you shot all of your bullets, every single one, did arcane damage. And you would hilariously just kill people with magic bullets. Alright, this dude wants to do PvP, but I don't have any I don't have any summons, so I'm running away. I'm running away from him, chat. I'll I'll do PvP later. I'm gonna summon I'm gonna summon my friends. Oh my god, he came all the way over here. <laughs> Tinge gem stone that we can put in our gun. It doesn't do much, but every little bit helps at this point. There's uh, some items over here, some fire paper, and I think there's some pebbles over here by these birds. I'm pretty sure those are pebbles. If they're pebbles, I'm gonna feel stupid for having done this. Oh, bloodstone shards. Okay, that's worth. And I think there's some more antidotes in here, but we have to not get blowed up.
It's easy to get blowed up in that room. Don't get blowed up, chat. Alright. I think we're ready to PvP now. I think my build's finished. So we're gonna PvP with this saw spear guy. The the trick is to not get shot <laughs> by the giant machine gun. So we can kind of bully him, mm. as long as we hit him first. He can heal, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Oh! He's really picky. He will come down here and fight, but, like, he's really picky about how he does it, I guess. I don't know. I didn't want the... I didn't want the dashing R1. I wanted the... Fuck. I wanted just the standard R1 because it has more hits done on it. Ah, that was dumb. But I should have just taken what I could get. But it's fine. We'll just bully the shit out of him with regular R1s. This dude's gonna drop us some bone marrow ash, uh, which is uh, an absolute shitter buff, and if you use it, you're, you're trash. Unless you put it in a cannon, in which case it's hilarious. No, I'm just kidding. Do whatever you want. But if you put it in a repeating pistol, I hate you. And, uh, and I'm gonna put your dad in jail. So, these dudes are all worshipping the body of, of one of their uh, fallen homies. Um, there's an oil urn right here, and if we knock it down, it sets the whole goddamn place on fire, which is hilarious. It's, the, it's, it's time for the From Software uh, platforming game where there's no jump button and falling means you die instantly. It's everybody's it's everybody's favorite part of the game. All right. This jump is basically just like some hat for your messengers to wear. It is not important at all and if I don't get it on the first try, I'm not going to give a shit about it. There you go. Now your now your messengers can wear a head bandage. Super important. I'm gonna slap some pungent blood cocktails right here, and uh, these dudes are gonna basically do all the work themselves. I'm just gonna throw the cocktail into the fire, and they're gonna go chase it, because they're idiots. This guy over here is like he's like friendly. I mean they're all friendly. You're a monster for coming here and doing this. This is this is on you. Jura's not lying to you. These people are just trying to like mind their own business and, and go to church. And you come into their church and you light it on fire and then you kill them all because you're a terrible fucking person. But that guy over there, like, even you know, he's like, please just don't hurt me. Please. I'm I'm just a I'm just a regular monster dude.
Wow, I never noticed him? No, you noticed him. You noticed him as you fucking mowed him down with your saw weapon, you fucking monster. You just never noticed that he was, you know, like, please don't hurt me. Because you're, you're a violent murderer. But Garman told me to go here? And it's almost like Garman's a fucking murderer who does who belongs in that fucking nightmare he lives in. Uh so we got some antidotes. We just circled back around. There's no reason for us to continue down that path. It literally would just lead us back to where we started. So we're gonna come through here. This is why we're not skipping this area. It's very, 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 very important. We've got a Ritual Blood, and uh, it's a Ritual Blood Tier 1. We got two of it. If we come over here, I think there's some pebbles, but this is actually an interesting, you know... Video games don't just put shit places for no reason. Whatever this item is, it's not particularly, like, worth it or whatever, but video game developers put items places for a reason. So in this particular instance, we come over here, we grab this item, it's a couple bloodstone shards. That's not bad, but we don't really, you know, we're already past that point. Anyway, but the point is, the game drew our attention over here. It, 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 it caught our eye, and it wanted us to see this burned down church. This is, uh, this is like, you know, they wanted to show off this vista to us. They wanted us to, like, look at this and see this area. Um, and it's a, it's a good looking area. So, yeah. Anytime you're playing a video game and you see some item and you run and you pick it up and you're like, well, that wasn't fucking worth it at all. Maybe maybe just take a look around. And uh, and, and maybe the game's rewarding you with uh, a very nice view. Come over here, get some blood vials. Run up here. This is a shortcut. This is where we fought. This is where we had our PvP experience with that Saw Spear tryhard. Uh, now through here, there's gonna be some Titanite bugs, but there's also gonna be like some regular enemies. So, we're gonna get our torch out. To hopefully keep the enemies at bay. Um. But I lost the Titanite bugs. I lost them in the smoke. I have no idea where the hell they're at. Well. So, like, we're killing these dudes with, like, one R1 and one L1, you know? Um, that's, that's, that's huge. That's, being able to kill these dudes fast makes all the difference in the world. I have no idea where the hell this, this, uh, madness spawns. I just know that he's down here, and I know he always runs into that corner. So, we'll reload, and we'll get that guy. Didn't even know there was one here. It's the most missable one in the game, I think. Uh, I wouldn't even know how to judge that. But he's he's missable, for sure. Very easily missable. Um, I'll show you a trick that somebody posted online. And I don't know how... Where the hell is he? Ah, there he is. They behave so strangely. Like, who knows? There's a there's an old trick that says if you use a gesture, that, like, they'll come to you. I don't know how accurate that is. I mean, he did not come to me.
But I'll use that trick later on. I'll use that trick later on, and it'll work, and I'll in and, and and it it'll save us. It's it, it's gonna save us like a huge headache. Werewolf A saw us. He's mad. I don't think Werewolf B is aware of our presence just yet. If we can if we can do this without fighting both werewolves at the same time, that'd be great. Nice. And again, it's like, I mean, you know, never fight two werewolves at the same time if you can help it. Uh, but always, you know, stay behind them or beside them. Don't, don't, don't get in front of the werewolf. They're only, they're only dangerous if you're in front of them. And that's what the game has, hopefully, that's what the game has been trying to beat into our head this whole time. Is that this beastie looking thing is only dangerous if we stand directly in front of it. And, and, and I don't know if you can believe this or not, chat, but that's about to come in handy. We're about to need that. So, as we walk over here, the, there's, like, these hanging corpses that should be, like, catching our eye, and we can kind of see this werewolf boy up here hanging out. And when we run back in here to grab this... Surprise! He just dropped us some beast blood pellets, uh, which are a buff that sort of acts like a pontiff ring, if you're familiar with Dark Souls 3. Basically, the more you attack, the more damage you do. Uh, except in the case of Bloodborne, it is much, much, much stronger. <laughs> it is infinitely better. Beast blood pellets are busted. Uh, you take more damage if you've used one. Uh, and the less insight you have, the more, uh, the, the better the Beast Blood Pellet works. It works better with low insight. Um, but it allows you to, to build up, uh, damage that is just unparalleled by anything in the game. Um, so here we've got our shortcut. We can come back here. You guys remember this is where we picked up the hunter's torch and we dropped down. And then if we go this way, there's that big ladder. This is right at the beginning of the area. So we've got our shortcut now. Daddy Alabaz, have a good night. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, this is an interesting mechanic here, but unfortunately, like, it's... It's difficult to understand it. But what's happening is this beast right here is hiding behind this house. And he's shrieking. And when he shrieks, he buffs the werewolf that's nearby. But it's very easy to miss that. And to not understand what the hell is happening. Uh, but the werewolf goes from having, like, regular eyes to having, like, red eyes. And it's because he's been buffed by that... Uh, that shrieking thingamajig. That, that ugly beast dude. But, either way you approach that, that encounter right there, it's, it's very easy to, to not pick up on what's happening. Because you either approach it from behind and get the, get the big backstab on the, the big beast, or... You approach it from the front and get absolutely shit on by the werewolf. So, like, it's it's super easy to miss what the hell uh, what the hell happens there. <laughs> Is Fist of Gradia a meme weapon? You can do some interesting things with Fist of Gradia, but um, it, you know, it requires you give up a gun in order to do it. I mean, you can have the Fist of Gradia in slot one and have a gun in slot two, obviously. But, like, 
when the fist of Grady is out, you don't have your gun out. So that's an important thing to remember. But but you can do some interesting things with the fist of Gradia. It it always always staggers, uh, which means you can use it to always stagger something and then parry it. So basically, it's just like a like I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna boom, and then boom. Uh, you can ring the bell here, and Alfred will help you fight this beast, but we don't need Alfred's help, because we're not a chump, chat. We're not a chump. I believe in you. This is easy. We've got our antidotes. Don't forget your antidotes. Alright? And, and, and what did we learn about the werewolf? Just don't be in front of it. Just don't be in front of it, and it can't hurt you. And it's pretty much the same thing here. All we're gonna do is walk slightly to the left. <laughs> If he does that attack, no big deal. If he does that attack, we get the backstab. We duck the clothesline. Also, uh, since we're using a saw cleaver, that's a saw weapon, and this thing is a beast, we're doing extra damage against him. I'm walking to his left. You can also walk to his right. I don't think it matters either way. Uh, the worst part about this boss fight is the pillars and the walls. He, he's so easy to get, like, glitched into walls and shit. And all of, like, that attack right there, like, it sends him flying so far away. The pain in the ass to deal with. Like, what is happening? <laughs> I accidentally used my blood vial because I'm an idiot. I meant to use this. And I'm poisoned again, because I'm an idiot. We're not panicking. We're healing. Antidote. Still not panicking. Everything's fine. All right, he's getting ready to scream and poison us. But we have time to backstab him and stop it from happening. At this phase in the fight, anytime he moves, he's, he's, he's building up poison. So this is the part of the fight where we want to, uh, you know, make it quick. In a perfect world, in a perfect world, any time, any time he buffs, we would backstab him for buffing. We would make him pay for buffing by backstabbing him. In a perfect world. But, I'm not good enough to, I'm not good enough to position him where I want him to be all the time. Like, like, some really good challenge runners and speed runners are capable of doing. So, like, sometimes he's just stuck in a wall or in a pillar and I can't backstab him. But it's no big deal. It's fine. Just don't panic. Keep your antidote handy, and, you know, don't don't freak out. You'll be fine. Also, notice how having uh, that HP saved my ass there. If we hadn't leveled up Vitality, I'd be fucking dead. But we did level up Vitality, and as a result, everything's fine. Also, we killed the boss, and we got a Chalice, and now, now, we can get any weapon we want, chat! Any weapon! Name a weapon, chat! Name a weapon. We'll go get it. For free! For free, we'll go get the weapon. Um, so... We're at the point in the game where, uh...
We're at the point in the game where we now have access to Chalice Dungeons. I'm playing online. I have a subscription to PlayStation Network. So I can use Chalice Dungeons. The way Chalice Dungeons work is you come here, you use one of these ritual altars to create a Chalice Dungeon with a Chalice Ritual. Or to search for Chalice Dungeons created by hunters in other worlds. So I can make chalices that the game has given us or I can make chalices that players have given us. Uh, in order to start this, the first thing we have to do is the first chalice dungeon. Once we have this, we can now access the false depth dungeons. And using the false depth dungeons, we can get a hold of all the weapons, we can get a hold of all of the, the tier 3 runes, we can get a hold of powerful blood gems that will greatly increase our damage. This is, like, we're finished, essentially. This is the hard part. It's finished. It's done. It's over. Um, we need, uh, it, like, all you have to do is get online, get on Google, and type in Bloodborne Blood Sheets. And you will find a PDF of all of the chalice dungeons and you can go to the uh you can go to the save edited chalice dungeons and you can look up whatever you need whatever you want to find it's there tier three clockwise metamorphosis gives us an extra 15 percent hp uh we can get that if we want to use the burial blade and not have to beat the game first we can go into a chalice dungeon and we can get the burial blade now we don't have to beat gearman for it um, if you want to get the Blades of Mercy for a skill build, but, you know, you don't want to have to go through all of Eileen's quest first, we can do that. We can go into the Chalice Dungeon, we can get Lost or Uncanny, uh, Blades of Mercy. Um, I think I misspoke when I, but you know what I'm talking about. We can do all of that now. And that's what we're going to do, but first, I'm going to take a little bit of a, uh, we're back. Now, um, oh, hang on. Let me stream marker. Okay, now we're back. And uh, we were talking about, um, like, DLC weapons. And if I'm not mistaken, and chat seems to think the same thing here, um, if you want DLC weapons, you have to actually own the base game version. You have to actually own the weapon before you can buy the variants of them in the DLC. Or, I'm sorry, in the Chalice Dungeons. So if you want a DLC weapon, you need to actually just pick it up in the DLC. However, that's super easy. And we could actually do that... Uh, we could actually do that right now. Um, first things first. We're sitting on a bunch of Blood Echoes. Let's... Let's buy some blood vials. Alright. <clears throat> we could have leveled up just there, but we're going to level up here in a moment. We have two options at this point. The, the first and easy thing to do is to run this chalice dungeon. Running this first chalice dungeon, the one that you get for the blood starved beast, is always, always, always worth it. One, because you need to do it in order to access the false depth dungeons. In order to access the False Depth Dungeons, we have to have a Root Chalice. And in order to get a Root Chalice, we have to kill, what, one or two bosses in this dungeon? If you wanted to, right now, you could go kill Viker Amelia, and when you came back to the Hunter's Dream after killing Viker Amelia, you would have the Bloodshot Hunter's Eyeball and you could use it to access the DLC. And from there, you could just run and pick up whatever DLC weapons you wanted to use. Uh, obviously, some would require that you beat uh, Ludwig first. Uh, some would require that you beat Maria first before you gained them. But things like the Beast Hunter safe, uh, the Beast Cutter, um the pizza cutter those you could pick up without having to to kill any bosses um and that's what we'll do that's what we'll do but first we're going to get this root chalice
this first chalice dungeon, nothing is going to be hard in it. Everything is going to be right at the level we need it to be at. Uh, that's because this is this is the planned progression of the game. When they designed the game, this is what they had in mind. You would you would kind of stop playing the base game here, and you would come into these chalice dungeons and explore them a little bit. Gearman tells you that if you're you're having trouble with a part of the game, and the beasts are giving you a hard time to go into the chalice. Seek a holy chalice, he says. So, that's a bit of a, an in-game hint. Ow. That's a bit of an in-game hint for... Like, if you're fighting an enemy, if you're fighting a boss, if you're, if you're kind of stuck, and you're, you're having some issues, um, the time to go, that's, that's when it's time to go visit a, a chalice. And, and maybe you can find some things that'll help you out there. So the way the chalices are laid out is there's a gate that holds a boss behind it, but in order to open that gate, you have to get a lever. Every lever is protected by a mini-boss. In this case, a Watcher. These mini-bosses can drop blood gems. And the, the mini-boss blood gems, especially early in the game, are very, very good to put in your weapon. All of the best blood gems are going to be found in these Chalice Dungeons. Uh, you're gonna find blood gems in the base game, and they're fine, um, but they're nowhere near the the level of powerful as the blood gems you're gonna find uh, here in the dungeons. These dudes right here uh, are pretty badass. Uh, fortunately. After you hit them once or twice, they want a buff, and when they go to buff, it's free backstab, baby. So we've used that lever, and that lever has opened a gate somewhere. So now we can go fight the boss. Oh, shit. Mm. But, just for the sake of kind of, uh, tutorialing... <laughs> the dungeons. We're just going to kind of look at the, the layout. And, um, essentially every dungeon is built uh, the same. There's different layouts that they can be, which changes, like, the architecture or the, uh, you know, the, the aesthetic of the dungeon. But for the most part, they're all pretty much laid out the same way. You have uh, what, what we refer to as bonus areas in Chalice Dungeons. And bonus areas will typically have uh, a treasure chest, or um, some other... Uh, no, I mean, they'll all have a treasure chest. That's what they'll have. The The bonus area looks exactly like every other area, except a lot of times it'll be marked by a door. Uh, it's like a gold door with what looks like a scarab on it, kind of. Um, the treasure chests have... <laughs> the treasure chests have uh, have weapons or runes or whatever else. Um, sometimes they'll just have ritual materials so that you can create more different chalice dungeons. Sometimes they'll have um, 
you know, a, con- a, a large consumable soul or blood echo item. Um, if it has something that you can only have one of, it will have uh, a, a madman's knowledge in it, um, or a great one's wisdom. Uh, this giant dude here is a total fucking dickhead. His jump attack that he starts to fight off with, like, if you don't dodge it, it it'll one-shot you. Um, the, you'll notice he's got, like, a tumor on his right leg there, and it's, it's very easy to, to pop that, and if you pop it, it does a massive amount of damage to him, uh, which is fine and good. I would... I would I would caution if I was telling you how to fight this boss if you were asking me for advice I would tell you not to pop that thing not not right off the bat the first thing I would do is weaken him get him to about half health and when he gets at half health he's gonna buff himself and when he buffs himself his attacks do more damage he gets more aggressive he's just overall more of a pain in the ass so if we get him to half health first and then pop the tumor that's less of phase two that we have to deal with because we're just going to cut off like a huge chunk of his health, right? You can, uh, you can, um, stagger this dude. You can break his limbs, etc. Just like you can every other, you know, every other big boss. He has a lot of attacks that will miss you if you're standing directly in front of him. But they will still stagger you. But they don't do any damage. The Undead Giant also teaches us a lesson about counter damage in this game. Uh, if we get roll caught, quote unquote, in Bloodborne, we take like double damage. A lot of times, especially if you're doing challenge runs, It's better to just... It's better to just eat a hit... ...than it is to get the dodge wrong. You'll see that with, uh, Ebrietis. She has that bullshit charge attack. If, if you know you're not gonna be able to dodge it, it's better to not even risk it. Just take it. Just take the hit. Because you can at least survive that. But if she, if she hits you and you're trying to dodge and you get counter hit, you're fucked. Like that. <laughs> I took so much... Oh, God. I took so much damage just there. We have to be careful about getting far away from him, because that'll that'll entice him to do his jump attack. Especially if we use an item. It almost like it, It's almost like uh, an AI punish. If you want to heal and you're far away from him, wait for him to... God damn it. Wait for him to be attacking. It's such a pain in the ass. All right, so we, we've, uh, we've crippled one of his limbs, but as you can see, that tumor is still on him. So now he's trying to heal that limb that we crippled. That's fine. And because we waited to pop that tumor until, you know, later on, uh, we were able to, to basically skip half of that fight. And we managed to skip the harder part of it. 
so the the blood gem that the giants drop, they are they're, they're called adepts. And uh, what they do is they either increase your blunt damage or your thrust damage, either one. Uh, in the case of the one we just got, it increases our blunt damage by 11.3%. It has a secondary effect of adding 4.2 flat physical damage. Not percent damage, just a flat 4.2 damage. Um... A blunt gem like that would, would, would work well in a Kirk Hammer um, or a Beast Cutter, something like that. Uh, we also got a heavy blood gem earlier, and that just increases our strength scaling. Anyway. Oh, yeah. So these dungeons are full of traps. <laughs> I accidentally stepped on a button, and the button spawned a bunch of enemies. And then in my panic to run away, uh, one of the caskets had an enemy in it. That's why the torch comes in handy. Alright, so the purple light door is the one that means, you know, that's the, that's the locked door that leads to the boss. Uh, we have two options here. You can honestly, like, people have been through these dungeons. And remember, these are dungeons that are, like, the game has made. This is this is what's called a story dungeon. Um, you can read the notes that other players leave, and, like, they'll point the direction of the lever if you just want to rush through and, and, and grab the lever and fight the bosses. Um, but it's always, you know, even, even in these early dungeons, it's worth to run through uh, because everything... Everything drops blood vials, everything gives you blood echoes, um, these are, uh, you know, worth exploring, worth looking around. Also, exploring chalice dungeons is how you get ritual materials. Holy shit. Exploring chalice dungeons is how you get ritual materials? Oh, are you kidding me? And we're going to need those ritual materials to make more chalice dungeons. Alright, so this is what we refer to as a bonus area. We've got a mini boss, and he's guarding a treasure chest instead of guarding, uh... Instead of guarding, uh, the lever. And inside the treasure chest is... Some Ritual Blood Tier 2. And he also dropped some Ritual Blood Tier 2. And we need Ritual Blood Tier 2 to make Depth 2 Chalice Dungeons. Depth 2 Chalice Dungeons are harder, so the enemies drop more Blood Echoes, and they drop better Blood Gems. Um, the, the depth of the, uh, the chalice dungeon is indicated by the, uh, little parenthesis number next to it. Alright, these little red dudes means there's a bell lady near us. And she's just summoning these dudes. We could kill these dudes forever. They're only giving us 28 blood echoes. You know what I mean? Like, there's better things to farm. Let's just get rid of this shit. It's everybody's favorite Dark Souls 1 PvP build. Wolf Ring. Dark Wood Grain Ring. Crystal Great Club. Fast Roll. Naked. Still got 40 poise. And he's weak to backstabs. So he dropped us a tempering blood gem. Parentheses two. Physical attack up seven point five percent. 
So the mini bosses, a lot of builds, um, a lot of builds will use gems. A lot of weirder builds will use blood gems farmed from mini bosses like that. Um, obviously, none of these are going to be giving us, uh, you know, really powerful shit. But way, way, way later on. Some of the mini bosses will have like blood tinge gems, and uh, and and you know if you've got a blood tinge build, that'll be like the guy that you're farming, the not not the actual boss, but just a mini boss who's like guarding a, a lever or guarding a a treasure chest or something. All right. So these are our boys. These are our dudes. This is... Get used to fighting this boss, because on a quality build, this is... This is... This is the guy we need. Um... They're, you know, easy to parry. The... The, the trick is just keeping them separate from each other enough to where you're not getting double teamed or triple teamed. So you can, like, just take your time with this fight. That was way too early. The dude with the gun will stop using his gun when he gets at like about half health. So if you if you want to and it's possible and you want to just get in there and like knock him out or at least knock him down to half health, you can do that. But I mean it's it's kind of worth to just leave him alone and just like avoid him, you know? And just make the other guys come to you. These dudes have a really, really easy to parry attack. Uh, it's just a matter of getting them to do it. Basically, they just, like, try and saw into you like a fucking tree. It's much safer to parry than that. <laughs> um, the best way I've found to get them to do it is to, like, walk towards them and to walk around them a little bit. It's a bit of a problem with the gun guy. But if we use this pillar here... Ow! One, two, parry. Easy. So if you're fighting that dude, like, it, sometimes you'll find him guarding a lever, you know? And in that kind of situation, he's, like, super, super easy to parry. He's just a pain in the ass right now because of his fucking friend. Now it's now it's now it's pretty easy. He can't shoot us if we're this close to him. He does have an attack where he tries to like womp us with his lantern. Oh my god, my dog. Sophie, please. But he's he's pretty easy to like backstab chain.
Um, so we got a tempering blood gemstone. We'll come back and look at it in just a second. I'm going to take a very quick break and I'll be right back. Marker and then I'm going to start talking again. All right, we're back. We're back. We got a tempering blood gemstone, parentheses, three, as well as Thumeru root chalice. Thumeru root chalice is what allows us to access all of the false depth dungeons. Tempering blood gemstone, parentheses, three, is our new go-to uh, weapon. Uh, this is going in our weapon. Physical attack up 13.5%. And that's just about what you're going to get every time you fight this boss. Um, it is totally, totally worth to come in here and kill these dudes as early as possible for that 13.5, 14% gem. It is absolutely always worth. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I've only got four blood vials and four blood echoes. I've got 8,000, I'm sorry, four blood vials, four quicksilver bullets, but I've got about 8,000 blood echoes. Uh, this would be a good time for us to return to the dream. Simply returning to the dream will refill our blood vials and bullets. Uh, also, here's a little thing. You see all these uh, messengers at the bath? Or, I'm sorry, at the lamp? The, the, the messengers hanging out at the lamp is an indicator of how many people are currently in the dungeon you're in. It's, uh, it's a bit like in Dark Souls 3 when you see embers at a bonfire. Uh, you see this player right here uh, with their, their, we see their phantom, and it's got that weird effect at the feet. It's because that person is either looking for co-op or looking to co-op. Uh, this number of people, this number of messengers at the lamp represents a large number of players um, here in this dungeon. Yeah, I think if they're beckoning, the ripples go in. If they're looking to co-op, the ripples go out. I think. Oh, 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 could it be? Could it be, please? Please, please. Damn it. There's a... There's a very, very rare dialogue you can get when the doll is hanging out right there. Uh, she's she's saying a prayer to the messengers. Uh, and it's... I mean, you can just look it up on YouTube. But, like, it's so cool if you, if you just happen to get it. You know? As you're playing the game. Um, but most of the time when she's over here looking at this headstone, she just is hanging out and as you walk up she'll just stand up but uh yeah sometimes if you if you ever come to the dream and you don't see her standing in her normal spot she's over there and it's always worth walking over there to see if you'll you'll catch her doing the prayer it's just a completely random thing So, look at that. Our damage goes from being increased by 2.1% to 13.5%. Look at that. Look at the, the, the increase in damage right there. Now, think about that. If, if, if your damage was... Think about how much damage that would be if our base damage was at, say, like, 200 200 being increased by 13.5%. And then think about... You could have three of those gems. And think about how much damage that would add up to be. And then think about... You could have 27% gems. And you see, you start to understand how powerful these blood gems are that we're, that we're putting in our weapon. Um, and how strong uh, that that's gonna make our uh, our damage. Welcome, what is very well met. All right, we're gonna go ahead and level up a little bit more uh, vitality. This is gonna get us to 793. Actually, we're not. No, wait, we are. We are. We're gonna level up. Okay. And then what we're gonna do? Farewell. 
Oh, good hunter. Is we're gonna use these. All right. Now, chat. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, you're not gonna be able to see it, but chat is gonna help us out here. Can somebody in chat give me a false depth dungeon that will allow me to get um let's do uh let's do Ludwig's Holy Blade. Uncanny Uncanny or Lost. Can anybody can anybody give me a glyph to get a Ludwig's Holy Blade? Doesn't matter if it's uncanny or lost. Either one is fine. Um so, while we're waiting for chat to give me uh, a glyph, I'll talk about this real quick. This is a saw cleaver. There exists an uncanny variant and a lost variant of every weapon in this game. All it does is change the gym layout. Now, where you get gems is based on the dungeon. If you want the star-shaped gems, called radials, you get those in Thumeru Dungeons. If you want the crescent moon-shaped gem, uh, called Waning, you get those in Lauren Dungeons. Enemies do have a very, very, very small chance to drop you a gem in a different shape than what they are supposed to drop. So you might potentially get uh, a Waning gem from something that's supposed to drop a triangle. Or you might potentially get a triangle from something that's supposed to drop a radial, etc., etc. Uh, the Lost variant will, you know, like maybe the Lost variant has a triangle instead of uh, a waning. And maybe the Uncanny variant has a triangle and a waning and only one radial. And you know what I mean? Like, so it just changes the gym shape. You can use that to determine. Uh, what would be the easiest gym farm for you? Uh, if you're making an arcane build, you're going to be spending time in ease dungeons because that's where you're going to get all your powerful arcane gems. So you want your weapons to have triangle gym slots. Uh, the, you know, a lot of times you might decide to get an uncanny or a lost weapon because you found a good gym that you can use. You just don't have the weapon for it. Well, maybe the Lost variant has that gem slot, so maybe I go for that Lost variant instead of the standard, uh, you know, etc. Anyway, chat seems to have uh, gotten back to me. Um, so now that we have, now that we have this Thumeru root chalice, and we're online, and we have a PlayStation account, we have a PSN account or whatever it's called, PS Plus. I don't know what the hell it's called, but since we have that. We can search Chalice by Glyph. And we're going to go into a False Depth Dungeon. It is V3 in X W J R G. Nope, no dungeon. Did I type it in wrong? Oh, it's a Q. All right, my bad. My bad. V, three, N, X, W, J, R, Q. There we go. Okay. So, this is a false depth dungeon. This dungeon has been save edited. Uh, this is if you want to get right down to it, essentially cheating. But it's cheating that everybody has access to. <laughs> uh, talking about these dungeons can get you banned on the Bloodborne subreddit. Um, last I heard, I don't... Uh, I don't... I'm not going to comment. I'm just... Everybody has access to this. <laughs> and if you don't have access to this, it doesn't matter because you're not PvPing with people. Um... This is a, a made-up dungeon that someone has changed the values of the enemies. They have changed, uh, basically, what should be a very easy dungeon 
uh, has been manufactured. And now, this should be like a, a tier one dungeon. This should be like the easiest type of dungeon. Um, but what they've done is they have uh, they've made it where you can access it as if it was the easiest dungeon. But it's not the easiest dungeon anymore. It's It's been save edited. It, it is kind of on the same level of like Rosaria's finger infinite uh, infinite respect glitch. It is, it's kind of like, it's kind of like that. Um, it's just one of those things where like everybody can do it. And it's not, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's not difficult to access or whatever. So notice how little damage I'm doing to this guy, right? Shit. This these dudes are are obviously not these are not like tier one dungeon enemy difficulty. Uh, these these are now like these are now like max level difficulty, but they've been they've been put into this very you know quote unquote easy dungeon. Um, so these dungeons are a super easy way to get some blood echoes. Killing, you know, just regular enemies in these dungeons will 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 amass, you know, uh, a good number of blood echoes that you can you can use uh, to level up, to buy blood vials, you know, anything you need to do. Um, you just have to be careful because, you know, everything here is is tough. So we can maybe try and use the the pebbles Sorry, kids are leaving, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to trying to get them to open this door so that I don't suffocate in this very hot room in the box. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Anywho, like if we can get these enemies one on one and we can kill them, it's absolutely worth. As that one dog was worth four thousand blood echoes, like that, that's that's so many blood vials right now. You know what I mean? I'm glad I was locked on to the dude and only hit the dog. Wait. Oh. <laughs> reverse that. Strike that and reverse it. I'm glad I was locked on to the dog and. And only hit the dude. Yeah, on the topic of uh, on topic of, of of glitches and stuff like that, like everybody everybody draws their line somewhere, you know, or or, or you know, you, you don't well, you don't draw it at all. But I like I don't. I don't begrudge anybody for using these false depth dungeons, like, at all. Because if you're trying to do uh, Bloodborne, you know, PvP or whatever, like, it's... These things are such a lifesaver for people who don't... who haven't done it before, or maybe don't understand, you know, every little aspect or whatever. It does so much. It does so much for um, the accessibility of, and I don't mean to use that word like people talk about like accessibility options in games where it's like, you know, hey, one of my hands doesn't work right, so I need accessibility options. It's not like that. It's just it it it, it makes it so much easier for people to get involved in in doing PvP and stuff that. And, and this game has, unfortunately, like, this weird... People are like, oh, the PvP in Bloodborne's bad. Um, 
It's not at all. The PvP in Bloodborne is great. It rules. Uh, it's good, actually. <laughs> um, so anything, anything that helps people, like, finally get into it and try it out, like, I am in favor of that, you know? Um, if, if you want to, like, and... The, the people who created these false depth dungeons, like, they've made it easier to get certain things. They've made it easier to get everything. But you're not going to get the best things. In order to get the best blood gems, you're still going to have to go into the game, quote-unquote, the real way. You know what I mean? To get the very best blood gems. Like, you're going to have to do all that work. And there's no getting around it. But if you if you want to try Bloodborne PvP, this is such a... Like, that's why I'm making this right now, you know? This is such a... It's such an easy in. And... and Bloodborne's never had anything like that. God, I hate you. Alright. We've got 10,000 blood echoes from killing, like, two dogs and a naked guy. If that gives you some idea of, like, how... Whew, how tough these enemies are here. He says, as he just absolutely shits on this idiot. Student, welcome back. Thank you for 14 months. Yeah, we found out that if I stream directly from the PlayStation, Comcast doesn't throttle my internet. So, like, I can, I can, I can stream later uh, if I stream directly from the PlayStation. And fortunately, it's Bloodborne month, which means we're streaming Bloodborne, which means we need the PlayStation. Hey, chat, remember how I was saying this dude has that easy to parry attack if you can get him alone 1v1? Look at the damage! One, two, three. Oh, baby! One, two, three. Whew! Need to heal. Now, if you don't want to kill this dude, you don't have to. Um, you can just pull the lever and go about your business. The lever's right there. But I want to kill this dude. Because I want the blood echoes he's going to give me. And he could potentially drop me a, a, a blood gem. That would absolutely be a game changer for us. You can parry that little drawback he does right there. You just have to know when to do it. I was trying to see if I could get him with the fully charged R2, but it doesn't seem to be worth. Mm. 
The only attack I can get him there is uh, the dashing L1. <laughs> 14,000 blood echoes for killing that one dude. Four quicksilver bullets. Not exactly worth. Not exactly worth. But uh, if he had dropped us a blood gem, it would have been like an absolute game changer. You could, like, you could potentially get, like, uh, you know, like an, a 21% a tempering blood gem from that dude. And a 21% tempering blood gem at this level would be insane. Um. So, the, we're here for the, for the Ludwig's Holy Blade. Um, what depth is it in, chat? Is it in depth, or, or what layer is it in? Is it in the first layer or the second layer? Uh, you're the second person today I've heard talk about Comcast throttling their internet when streaming. Is this becoming more common? Uh, it seems to be, yes. Comcast sent out a thing that was like, Hey, we're sorry if your internet sucks during COVID-19. Please, ooh woo, please understand that it's hard to pump all that internet through the tubes. Ooh woo. We're sorry. <sighs> First layer, pre-lamp. Second. Well, which one is it, chat? <laughs> oh, good. Look who it is. And this dude will absolutely... Oh, God. So the worst part about... The worst part about this dude... Is his... Uh, ability... To... Stagger us. Second layer... Pre-area. Okay. So, yeah, his ability to stagger us with attacks that miss is is the worst part about this dude. Um, he's able to do that, and sometimes it just true combos into him getting to hit us for free. But remember... We're trying to save. We're trying to save that that pimple pop. What's that TV show? Doctor Zip Popper or whatever. We're trying to save that until the beginning of phase two because it's going to do so much damage. All right, so it, 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 every Dark Souls game, every From Software game before Sekiro had a bit of a posture system, right? Um, when NPCs have have you know like just walking around poise, just standing poise, we just called it poise. Because that's essentially what it was. But every one of those enemies could eventually be staggered. Going back even to like... Mm, going back even to like Dark Souls 1. Like, if, if you two-handed your weapon and you, and, you hit, and you hit the Black Knight enough, it would kind of stagger, right? Uh, so in, in Bloodborne, they've basically taken that Dark Souls 1 mechanic... And they've they've uh, they've increased it to be this limb break mechanic, where if we focus on one limb, not only do we stagger the enemy, 
we, we, we actually break its limb. And by breaking its limb, we can do extra damage to it. Um, and obviously, different attacks have, just like in Dark Souls, how different attacks have different uh, poise breakpoints and different stagger values. You know, like, uh, if you if I hit you with a great sword R2, it does more poise damage than if I hit you with a great sword R1, right? Well, it's the same in Bloodborne. Different attacks have different uh, different levels of stagger or whatever. So if if we can hit this dude with like some fully charged R2s, if we can hit this dude with some R1 L1 combos and stuff like that, we'll build up that. We'll build up that limb break faster. It's just a matter of not getting fucking one shot. <laughs> also, Rogue Inseminator, thank you for the gift sub to Calcium Strength. I appreciate that very much. Calcium Strength, enjoy your emotes. It's in the first bonus room. All right. Everybody keeps telling me different shit. But apparently we can get the uh we can get the 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 weapon here. So that's what we'll do. I just lost all my blood echoes and that sucks. I kind of just want to fight this dude now. I really like, you know, this is a this is a fun boss. But I'm doing so little damage that it's kind of pathetic. I honestly did not see that coming. I saw that coming, though. Like, that attack right there doesn't have a follow-up to it in Phase 1. But in Phase 2, it does have a follow-up. This is... absolutely ridiculous, chat. Look how little damage I'm doing. This can be a three hit or a four hit combo. If we manage to if we manage to break his leg... He'll start taking, like, double damage, which would be nice. But holy shit. We do so little damage. <laughs> oh, the magic pixel chat. Oh, I tried to dodge around that and I just couldn't get out of my recovery in time. Circle back! Ha ha ha! If you really... If you really wanted to, like, have a go at this boss and try and fucking get it, I would definitely recommend Beast Blood Pellets. I would I would recommend that because you would build up your own damage so fast it would, it would help you uh, exponentially. God... Alright, we're gonna go back into the pre 
area. Chat says the Ludwig's Holy Blade is here in the pre area. After lying to me and telling me it was on layer two so they could watch me fucking flail impotently against that giant, Chat has decided that they've had enough of the joke. And uh, it turns out it was here the whole time. So, in Chalice Dungeons, these guys right here... Um... They don't drop upgrade materials. They actually drop, uh... They actually drop blood gems. And now, they're never, like... The best blood gems. But, they're better than what we have, almost guaranteed. Tempering Damp Blood Gem 4. Attack up 12.1%. That absolutely beats the pants off of the 5% that we've got. We've got one like 13% and one 5%. So that, that absolutely is going to help us out there. Um... Uh, Nino, if you're asking me why I know false depth gems, like, that's- that's what we're doing, like, right now. <laughs> um... To- to be honest, at this point, the false depth gems aren't gonna do much for us anyway. Uh, because our, like... You know, false depth gems, like all blood gems, are based on, um... Like, percentage. It's like a percentage increase of your damage. So, like, a 27% increase in zero damage is... ...still trash. So, it, it'll help us. It will help us. But it's not gonna... It's not gonna be, like, the cure-all for, um... For everything. At least not right off the bat. It will help us very soon. It's just not gonna help us right this second. So... And, and keep in mind, we're going here for the for Ludwig's Holy Blade. At this point in the game, we could already buy it if we wanted to. But if we want to save those blood echoes for something else, then you know why not? That sucked. That also almost sucked. And keep in mind, we're doing this for, for Ludwig's Holy Blade, but... With these false depth dungeons, with the blood sheets, you can find whatever you want. You know, like I said, if you want the burial blade, you can get that. And now you don't have to beat Garman for it. Uh, if if you want the Chicago, now you can get that, and you don't have to you don't have to go to Kanehurst and beat Logarius. Um, it makes doing challenge runs. Oh, 
it makes doing challenge runs a lot more interesting because you can do you can just get the weapon you want to use at the very beginning of the run and that's awesome He's not doing that. There we go. And I just missed. Still not doing it. That little jerk back attack he has there. A lot of times he does that if you like walk behind him, but he's not doing it. But that's okay. No big deal. There it is. <laughs> Once you call it out, he'll start doing it. Alright, so, I mean, we've got 30,000 Blood Echoes, chat. 30,000 Blood Echoes. And we just got a free freaking Ludwig's Holy Blade. Like, now, it's uncanny, so it's it's got two radials and a triangle instead of, instead of its typical gym setup, which I think is two radials and a waning. Um, but, you know, hey, whatever. You know, for right now, we're talking about a free plus whatever, plus three weapon. I think I have enough blood uh, shards for that. Oh, yeah. Swimming in them, chat. Just swimming in the blood shards. So, we'll use a... Uh, we'll use a bold hunter's mark. We'll return to the dream. We'll upgrade this weapon. We'll level up. And, uh, you, you can just keep going from here. Like, uh, you can find another weapon that you want in the blood sheets. Pull it up. Look it up. It, maybe you want, uh, the, the, the rune. You know, you need the, the clockwise metamorphosis rune for more HP. You can look that up. Um, you can get, like, at this point, you can get a hold of everything that you need to, to do your run or whatever. So because, because we've got, you know, uh, 30,000 blood echoes, like, we can level the shit up easy. Farewell. Now we can use this, uh, now we can use this holy blade. We can level it up. Uh, if we wanted to... We could take the blood gems out of this thing, and we could put them in this thing. But we don't even really have to do that. We can just put this 12% in there, and then put, uh... uh we could put another one in here. I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use this blunt gem that I've got right here, right? And Ludwig's Holy Blade, uh, when it's in this form, it's doing blunt damage. So, like, this attack is just, it's its absolutely gonna murder shit for us. And that's great. That's great. Uh, we'll buy some more blood vials, because why the hell not? And, um, let's go kill Viker Amelia. Actually, actually, before we kill Viker Amelia, let's do something else. I think we can do it. Let's see. We're going to try, and, uh, so we've done two things here. We've, we've killed the blood-starved beast, and in killing the blood-starved beast, we have opened up, uh, this door on the right of the Cathedral Ward. This door is now open. We can go in here. Uh, but I think, I think, 
we've also done a second thing. And I want to check on that. We have. Alright. This bag man right here. This bag man right here. This is our best friend. So, Bagman kills us, but he doesn't just kill us. He kidnaps us. He stuffs us in his, in his fancy bag, and he takes us. He takes us away. Country, country Roads by John Denver, except it's Bagman and Yar Hargul. So, uh, I got nothing to talk about, really, except how great this place is, because this allows us to get twin bloodstone shards very, very early. Let's talk a little bit about the lore, though, while we're running around, just grabbing items. Um, a church member, uh, I can't remember her name. What's her name, chat? Anyway, she's been kidnapped. Uh, this is the only... Adela, that's it, thank you. This is the only active... group that we see in the game. The choir has two members who are out and about. One is uh, the false Yasefka, and the other is Yuria, who is hanging out with uh, Wilhelm. Or Willem. Master Willem. Um, those are the only two uh, choir members that we see who are doing anything uh, actively. We meet a third in the Nightmare of Mensis. He's a spy. But what good is it to be a spy in a, in a place you can't get out of, right? I don't know how useful that guy is. Uh, but his name is Choir Intelligence Edgar. And you fight him right after the giant spider room. Um, he's the one who uses the Augur of Abritus. Uh, he's using Ludwig's Holy Blade, and he has, uh, I think he's using the Rose, Rose Marinus, I think. But anyway, that guy, he's also in the choir. The, the Mensis people, the school of Mensis, are like actively engaged in, in a plot. And, uh, they're like the only group left doing anything. Everybody else seems like the, the rest of the church, the real church, the healing church, They've all either locked themselves away or they've turned into brain suckers or werewolves. Oh, this place right here rules so hard because we get all these free twin bloodstone shards. This is like every... If any time you're playing through the game, you should definitely let that bagman kill you ASAP so that you can get those those twin bloodstone shards. It's going to make a huge difference for us. We can also get the Tenitris here. 
as well. Also, we can, um... We can unlock some of these doors so that they're unlocked for us later, which, you know, helps. Now, it's important to remember where you're finding these dudes at, because later in the game, when we come back here, all these bagmen are going to be dead, and where the bagmen were, we'll find bloodstone chunks. It's like they're upgrading us from, from regular bloodstone to twin bloodstone shards. Oh shit. And then, later on, they're gonna upgrade us even further from twin bloodstone shards to bloodstone chunks. I really wish this witch would stop scooping my eyeballs out with her goddamn ice cream scoop. That would be great. Oh, little Yakobo redeemed, do the Dungeon Master voice. I bomb an atom atomically. Socrates' philosophies and hypotheses can't define how I be dropping these. Mockeries, lyrically performed armed robbery, flee with the lottery, possibly the spotted me. Battle scared shogun explosion when my pen hits tremendous. Ultraviolet light blinds forensics. There you go. Dungeon Master voice redeemed. There is a, uh, there is a... There is a cut content version of this song that you guys are talking about where it like it's it's it was called like prayer to the amygdala and it's like the 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 one voice that's like but then instead of the female vocal answering with the it's just this like it's a fucking nightmare it is so terrifying it is like real cthulhu cultist hour shit um, Lance McDonald, uh, who is a f just a tremendous uh, uh, content creator, uh, has a video up of it on his YouTube channel. Um, it's amazing. So, here we see Yarnum citizens who have also been carried away by the Bagmen. Uh, and we're just killing them, I guess, because we're a jerk. I don't know. No one can save us. Uh-oh. That didn't work out like I wanted it to at all. Oh, shit. My man's got hops, and he's fast as frick. Alright, so... Woo! What's nice about a quality build is all the different weapons we get to play with. What's nice about Ludwig's Holy Blade is it's it's got a, a straight sword attack, which is pretty fast and good. Um, but it's also got like this uh, big ass ultra great sword, uh, which can stagger the shit out of enemies, which is nice. Um, it's it's just so versatile. I love it. Most enemies can be easily stunlock chained by using the L2 attack. Like so. And that's that's that comes in so handy. So handy. And look at that. Tw free twin bloodstone shards. Uh keep in mind before we exit, we're going to go this way to fight Parl, the boss, but before we do that, we want to explore everything 
because we want all these twin bloodstone shards. And at a certain point, it becomes impossible to come back here until the game tells us that it's time to come back here. So, uh, you know, make sure you explore thoroughly and get all of your stuff the first time. Does the big thrust do blunt, by the way? Uh, pretty sure it does, yeah. I'm pretty sure everything on it does blunt. So, if we talk to Adela, she tells us that there's other church members here, and that they th that she's heard them screaming, but then the screaming stopped. Uh, we find the corpses of church members right there. All of them have Madman's knowledge on them, implying they've witnessed some horrible event that has given them insight, but also they are now dead. And they've been laid at the, the front gate of of this area, which we cannot access yet. It's closed. That armor gives us a little bit of insight into the, uh, the enemies here. Thick black pullover worn by hunters of the Unseen Village. The hunters of Yarhagul answer to the village's founders, the School of Mensis. Hunters in name only. These kidnappers blend into the night wearing this attire, designed primarily to defend from physical attacks. The binding of thick rope serves both to protect its wearer and restrain its foes. More free twin shards. So the cool thing about Bloodborne is, um, like, they, you know, like, the, the weapons, oh, I love them so much, man. I can talk about this shit forever. But you've got these weapons that are essentially, like, good weapons that you could, you could keep in plain sight and maybe people wouldn't, you know, like, you, you oh, it's just, he's just carrying a saw around. But, like, you know, you're not actually carrying a saw around. You're carrying around, like, a, a fucking murder tool for killing beasts or whatever. But then eventually the weapons became like, oh, it's a sword, but like it has to turn into a bigger sword because we expect we're going to have to fight bigger enemies. And uh, that shit rules. So you have this weapon that's, you know, like, ah, I'm going to fight these terrible mean dogs or whatever. But like... What happens if I have to fight a, a giant pig? <laughs> well, now I have a giant sword that can fight the giant pig. I love it. I love it so much. I don't know if we read the item description on that yet. A trick weapon typically used by healing church hunters. It is said that the silver sword was employed by Ludwig, the first hunter of the church. When transformed, it combines with its sheath to form a great sword. The healing church workshop began with Ludwig and departed from old Garman's techniques to provide hunters with the means to hunt more terrifying beasts and perhaps things still worse. So we kind of get the impression that Garman was like, oh, Garman was hunting like, you know, beastie werewolf dudes and things of that nature. And by the time the healing church started uh, its workshop, we were we were fighting much more terrifying, larger enemies and shit.
And there we got the Tenitris, uh, which is uh, a very fine... Uh, it's a very fine weapon. Um, it's not the best Bloodborne weapon, but you can use it on a, a lot of different builds. Arcane build, strength build, quality build, etc. And it gives us access to bolt attacks, and that is a big deal, because we're going to need those bolt attacks to deal with undead giants, because they're weak to bolt. So it's nice to have that. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I think we've got all the twin bloodstone shards. Uh, I th would you say hunters suffer from some sort of PTSD? Somehow I get that feeling. Um, I mean, they're just fucking cursed, right? They've... They're... They're all cursed. Like, in the most powerful way possible. Like, you know, they're cursed by, like, an elder god. Um, but I mean, all of the ones that we talk to, you could definitely, like, I mean, they're shook. They're obviously shook by, like, what they've seen. We don't meet a normal, like, we don't meet a well-adjusted hunter. All of them are like, yo, this sucks, don't do it. So maybe, you know? Like, I, I don't know that, I don't know that, uh, maybe, I don't know that PTSD is the, the, the right thing, but... Like... Whatever the Yarnum version of Shell Shocked is. Before we do Parl, I'm going to take a very quick break, uh, and I'll be right back. All right, hang on a second. All right, we're getting ready to go in and fight Parl, but chat has brought up lore, so we're going to talk about lore for just a second. Um, Finny the Cat says, I never understood the difference between healing church hunters, workshop, powder keggers, etc. I thought all hunters were part of the church or menses. And that's, that's essentially accurate. But there is a difference. So the first hunters were Garman and Maria, Probably Ludwig, probably Lawrence. Um, after the events of the fishing hamlet, when they bring back the blood and they found the healing church and they separate from Bergenworth, that's when we get the healing church. That's when the healing church creates the workshop. That's when Ludwig takes over and becomes sort of like the, the general of the workshop uh, hunters. They're not out there in the, in the chalice dungeons hunting down stuff. They're not in the fishing hamlet hunting down stuff. Now they're hunting things on like their own streets. And they've turned the the population into a makeshift army of hunters. That's the that's the workshop hunters. Um and then you have the healing church hunters which become like, you know, using these big ass righteous weapons to hunt big ass righteous monsters. The powder keggers are uh, uh, they are part of the workshop hunters. They're deployed to Old Yarnum, and they burn the thing to the ground. They blow it all up. But in the process, Jura and the rest of the powder keggers defect from the church when they realize that the church is sending them to kill people. Old Yarnum is part of Yarnum, and it's where the beast bl uh, plague first manifests itself. And Jura and the rest of the powder keggers all come to the conclusion that these aren't beasts, they're people who have been turned into beasts by the healing church blood. And so they become labeled heretics. Uh, and then you have the Mensis hunters, uh, who are essentially just kidnappers. But yeah, that's there's your lore. There's your lore. Alright. Um, let's go. Let's go fight uh, Parl. Parl's a fun boss. We're going to fight Parl later on in the Chalice Dungeons as the Lauren Dark Beast. And that's not fun. In fact, I would say it sucks. So, the trick here is to stay unlocked and do big damage to limbs. And to break any part of, of Parl's body that we can. If we can break one limb, we can break them all. It doesn't matter which one we break first, just as long as we do break a limb. We can also go for the headshot. I find it easier to stay unlocked. Maybe you're different.
You can dodge that attack or you can run away from it. Either way is fine. Just don't get hit because it'll fucking kill you. Oh my god, I love missing. I love to miss. Oh! <laughs> When you knock Parl down, Parl is still dangerous until it runs away from you because you know it's just going to charge back up. So if you, when you knock Parl down, it, it's like it, it loses its charge, and when it loses its charge, uh, it, it's it's still a dangerous enemy. If you're, if you're staying right up in Parl's face because it's trying to escape and it has all these wild flailing like get away from me moves. But then once it actually gets away from you, it, it's only got one thing on its mind. It's like I'm, I'm going to charge back up. When it's charging back up, that's when you can hit it with like some of these big ass Ludwig's fully charged R2, Kirkhammer fully charged R2. You know, uh, saw cleaver. You can get in there and like combo on on its limbs, and you can try. And, you know, if you've already broke its left hand, break its right hand. If you already broke its front legs, break its left. You know, break its back legs. Shit like that. Um, and here it's pretty simple. Uh, we, it could have been much easier. We're using a plus three weapon right now. We could we could upgrade that, and and that fight would have gone by even faster. Um, it's just a matter of knowing when to stay close and when to stay far. I like to stay unlocked when I'm actually like in there fighting and then when parl runs away from me i like to lock on so that i can run back to it but uh, you know parl's one of those ones that's like you're mostly doing so much damage that you don't know how hard that boss is but when you get into the chalice dungeons and you start fighting dark beast the lauren dark beast instead of dark beast parl you'll you'll realize how bullshit that particular boss actually is <laughs> but for now we're gonna return to the hunter's dream now we're gonna level up this weapon, and it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be huge, folks. All right, so we got a plus five weapon. Our damage is is uh, massively better. 163 on the saw cleaver to now 211. Uh, and if we wanted, you know, if we had leveled up the saw cleaver, it would have been equally as good. Um, we can buy more blood vials, buy more bullets, etc. You can level up right here if you think you should level up. But remember, it's more important that your weapon be leveled up. It's more important that you have blood b vials. These things are more important than your levels. As long as you've got the vitality to take a few hits, you're fine, you know? Like, it's, you, use your, use your, look at this. I can buy, I could buy 123 blood vials right now. You know what I mean? I'm gonna split that in half. I'm gonna buy 60. I've got 235. I'm not gonna run out of blood vials at this point. And I'll use the, Welcome. you know, now I'll level up a little bit. Very well. But like, you're talking about an increase in damage from 211 to 214. At this low level, why bother with that? When we could go from 878 hit points to over 1,000 hit points. And we've still got 4,000 blood echoes. So we can, we can, even more, we can, we can buy blood vials, blood bullets, etc. And remember... Buy them, buy them often and buy them early, because the earlier you buy them, the cheaper they are. Uh, 
right now we're going to take care of some quest lines I think we're gonna go talk to Eileen she should have a quest for us and uh, I think after that we'll do Viker Amelia and that will get us access to the DLC weapons and once we've got access to those DLC weapons, it also gives us access to some upgrades as well. This will be this will be uploaded to YouTube, yes. Uh, where the hell is Eileen? Come on, Eileen. Oh, I swear I'm not mean. I'm a hunter. Oh, come on, Eileen. Does Eileen appear after I open that gate, maybe? Alright. So, if you didn't buy the Hunter Chief's emblem and open that gate, then then we're going to open the Hunter's gate this way. Uh, we're going to come in here. We're going to kill this dude. Uh, we're going to grab some useless ass uh, blood runes. There's more. There's another blood rune if you want. You can take this elevator down. And there's a little hole right there. You can go through that. You can get, a, uh, I think, communion. I'm not going to do it because I don't need it. Uh, now, we can go in here. We can get, uh, this is a blood tinge gem, I think. Yep. Yeah. Some bullets. Some blood vials. If we ascend Uden Chapel, like we were told to, we'll actually have access to... We'll actually get access to the... Radiant Sword Hunter Badge, which is how you buy Ludwig's Holy Blade, typically. But we don't have to do that, because we used the False Step Dungeon. Hey! Dumb old man. How you like that, huh? How you like... How you like this? How you like this? How you like this? So, we come up here, and uh, we kill a few dudes. Get some bullets. Now that door right there, back there, is locked, but that's okay. We got the Radiant Sword Hunter Badge. This allows us to buy uh, some armor, some weapons, uh, and some new items, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so even though we've already got Ludwig's Holy Blade, it's worth coming down and getting that. Um, because I'm pretty sure it gives us some new buffs. Correct me if I'm wrong. But now we're going to do what we came here for, which is uh, kill this Titanite bug.
two twin bloodstone shards. And, uh, now, god damn it, chat. How do you do this? How do you do this? Where do you drop from? Do you drop from here? Is this it? I never remember how to do this. I always try and, like, jump, and that's always wrong. I mean, it's not wrong. You can make it. If you jump from that platform over there, you can make it. But if you mess it up, then you mess it up. There's a way where you can just, like, drop. Like, right here. You can just, like, drop. But I always fuck that up, too. Drop towards the ropes. Ooh! Alright. So we come in here, and we see that the, uh, the tower has been cut off. Obviously, this is not supposed to be reachable anymore. We're not supposed to be able to come here anymore. Uh, and there's a reason for that. The church has cut off all access to itself from the town. Here we find the abandoned old workshop. It's such a haunting image that it actually grants us insight. Uh, because this is our dream. But here we find it in the real world. That doll hat and that doll clothes right there, you can sell that to the bath messengers for so much money. So much money. There's the old hunter bone if you want to make an arcane build. Here's one third of an umbilical cord if you want lore or if you want to fight the, the true final boss of the game, the moon presence. Here we see the doll, and here, of course, the doll... Uh, finger wag thing that everybody wants. You, know, you gotta look at the finger. You gotta see the finger wag, chat. Otherwise, it's not a Bloodborne playthrough. If you don't see that finger wag. Oh, oh, there it. Oh, look at it. Look at it wagging. I picked, like, the worst camera angle. We need... Everybody's goddamn ghost. I need to die right here. I'm dead. Nobody gives a shit about your specter, you fucking idiot players. God, you suck. Come here. Give me that finger. It's not a real playthrough if I don't see the finger. There. Look at it go. Oh, look at it twitch, chat. Oh, what does it mean? What does it mean, chat? What does it mean? And then here we can get Garamond's crazy lunatic waifu hair ornament. Uh, the guy had absolutely lost his entire goddamn mind. Absolutely racked with grief over the fact that his beloved, uh, his beloved, uh, Maria had, had died. But there's no time to mourn, chat. There's no time to mourn. So, killing that beast gives us the beast rune. Um, uh, 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 most people know it by now, but the beast rune sort of acts as like the silver cat ring in Bloodborne. It reduces fall damage, which I think is sort of hinted at that that's how that beast got to the bottom of the, the area, is they just didn't take as much fall damage as somebody else would have. All right, another bagman. Also, Yarhogul kidnappers wandering the streets. That's no big deal. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna backstab this dude. There is, if you're running an arcane build, it's a very good idea to rush this area. Uh, because you can rush to this area. And you can kill this brain sucker. And this brain sucker is guarding uh, a blood gem. Uh, it's a fire blood, uh, fire blood gemstone. 
and you can put that in uh, your saw cleaver once it hits plus six, I think, right? And um, and then you can get a radial fire gemstone in that first chalice dungeon that we did. The next boss after the Watchers is a, uh, a watchdog of the old lords, and and that watchdog of the old lords will drop you a fire blood gemstone radial. And if you're running an arcane build, there's your damage uh, early in the game. So we open this gate. We run over here. We open this gate, and now we didn't have to pay for we didn't have to pay for that stupid uh, handkerchief. We didn't have to pay twenty thousand blood echoes for a handkerchief. Just uh, don't get shot and don't get smushed by giants. Uh, these dudes here have witnessed some absolute madness. Madman's knowledge all over the place. We'll come over here, and once you open this, it stays open forever. Uh, invaders can close your shortcuts, but they can't close that one. Um, we start finding church, uh, stuff over here, including church garb that we can use to talk to Adela back in Yarhargul and get her to come yeah. to this place. What a pathetic idea. You what? What, you think I'm a beast? Well, maybe I'll think you're a beast. And step away from our castle. So that's Nino, and he doesn't want to do anything St. Riot tells him to. So we'll come over here and we'll talk to this uh, sex worker. Sex workers uh, unionize. Oh my, Legalize it. I'm off during hunt, so if that's what you're here for, I'll leave you to your own devices. If that doesn't do it, come back in the morning, darling. She just said, if that doesn't do it, Join join my only fans. Oh, thank goodness. You're a hunter, right? Might you know of a safe place? The night is long. And I've got a little shame since left. Please. There must be some nice place to run off to. So we're gonna tell her about Uden Chapel. Oh, thank you, darling. Alright, she's gonna go there. We're gonna go back here and talk to Nino. He's like he's like Hey, where did you tell her to go? And you say the opposite. Tell him to go to Yusefka's clinic, and he'll actually go to Uden Chapel. If you tell him to go to Uden Chapel, he goes to Yusefka's clinic. Because Nino is a contrarian. Uh. Mmm. Just got wrecked, chat. Ow, got wrecked again. And they won't stop shooting. I think this is the best door dialogue in the game. I love that guy. He, that's my favorite guy. He's like, yeah! Hey, man, good luck out there! Church rules! Go get him, Tiger. <laughs> so, there's some church garb. You're gonna need to wear that church garb if you want, uh... If you want Adele, Adela to come back to your, uh, to your clinic. She won't talk to you unless you're dressed like you're from the church. Yeah. <laughs> 
that <laughs> that dude from the Gordon Ramsay TV show ruined Nino's whole career. Nino Nino being the Gordon Ramsay thing is 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 Nino's version of do the dungeon master saint. <laughs> Uh, so now we can go kill Viker Amelia. Oh, verticality, verticality! I'm not pass. Oh, I'm not passing it up. Verticality! Oh, it was worth. <laughs> no. Shit! Come on. Oh shit! My plunge attack canceled. Everything's fine. Just fighting an army of dudes. Just fighting an army of dudes. It's fine. Please! No! I locked under the wrong dude! Oh my god. Alright, come on, dude. With your stupid magic. So, this dude is able to cast magic because I have too much insight. If I didn't have this much insight, he wouldn't be able to do that. The implication is that he can always do it, but we can't always see it. And if we don't see it, it doesn't hurt us. Which is, uh, you know, interesting. Uh, little lore tidbit, I guess. Here we have these dudes. These dudes are actually pretty easy to parry on accident. When they, when they point their little stick at you, it's like a free parry. Like if they... Like if they uh, if they have the stick pointed at you and they're walking towards you, like they, it's just a free parry. It's easy. I accidentally forgot to pick up the numbing mists. The numbing mists we can use to stop Amelia from healing herself. Uh, we're not gonna have that, so instead we're gonna go with fire paper and just try and out damage uh, her healing. Hopefully we can do it. I mean, we've got a plus five weapon with decent gems in it, so Amelia is no joke. But and and the saw cleaver works great in this fight. Uh, if you're still using the saw cleaver, um, or if you're using a saw spear, if you've got a saw spear leveled up, those weapons work great in this fight because they they break her limbs very quickly. Why do their sticks make you frenzy? Um, they're, they're buffed with something, but they're also like the, the hunter's mark. So, one of those two things is, is, is making us frenzy. Frenzy is... is like our blood going crazy, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm remembering the lore correctly. Frenzy is like your blood going mad. Salt Cleaver works great all the time everywhere. This is true. So, we'll try and use the saw cleaver. Ow. We'll try and use the saw cleaver to break her limbs and then use the Ludwigs 
to do the big damage after. Alright. Oh, she's doing that big enemy stagger into true combo shit. Alright. We've broken all of her limbs. We've got the critical. Now it's time for the fucking big damage. L2s absolutely wreck her. And you can aim for her head. Just destroy. Love it. Uh, touching this gives us access to the memory of Lawrence and Master Willem. And you might be like, Well, Saint, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, it don't make no sense. To which I offer my counter argument. You've been using... Uh, other people's skull contents to gain insight all game, and you never complained about it. Shut up. Master Willem, I've come to bid you farewell. Oh, I know, I know. You think now to betray me. No. But you will never listen. I tell you, I will not forget our adage. We are born of the blood. Made men by the blood. Undone by the blood. Our eyes are yet to open. Fear the old blood. Somebody asked... Take my leave. Uh, Alopex Nightfox asked, Saint, why did she lose it here? When you lose it, I don't know if there's any correct answer to that. I, it might be tied to how late at night it gets and the, and the moon. Um, because that's just classic werewolf folklore kind of shit. Um, the reason they lose it at all is because they're cursed. They're all cursed. And the higher ranking member of the church you are, the more privy to the church's horrible secrets you are. And the more privy to those horrible secrets, um, the, the worse off it is for you in particular. So, I don't know why she loses it there, but the reason she becomes such a horrible beast is because she has rank in the church. Also, you'll notice now that we've killed her, we've moved the knight forward. Uh, it's not just, uh, I mean, it's a really cool, you know, gameplay thing where you kill bosses and it gets later at night. And the later at night it is, the weirder the enemies act. That's all cool and good. Um, but it also affects the price of things that we buy from the bath messengers. So when I'm telling you guys to buy your blood vials early and often... You know, they're, they're going to get more expensive the later in the night it is. So, buy your damn blood vials, chat. Alright, here's Eileen. She's finally here. She tells us she's got a mark. Don't go to Uden Chapel. She's going to kill Henrik. She gives us the shush gesture, which I absolutely fucking adore. I love it so much. Shh. It's great. It's great, great, great. Uh, we're not going to listen to her. We are going to go there. Um, because that's just who we are as people. We're gonna go... We're gonna hit him with a fully charged R2 in the back, and then instead of taking the critical, we're gonna use the follow-up R2 with Ludwig's Holy Blade. With all that blunt damage, it's just absolutely gonna wreck his shit. Eileen can take Henrik if you, if you hit him... If you hit him with that backstab, like, nine times out of ten, Eileen can finish the job and you don't have to get involved. Um, which is good because you don't want to accidentally hit Eileen and make her mad or accidentally hit her, do a lot of damage, and then Heinrich gets to kill her. 
Your character can't fit in that little gap right there. You have to walk around, but as long as you're quiet, you can you can always get back here and get this backstab. Henrik is an absolute badass. He doesn't joke around. He will absolutely parry your ass if you try and heal. You gotta be careful about that. So, we can pretty much just let Eileen handle it from here. Just don't let her die. And she's good. That wasn't necessary of you, but you have my thanks. We made it with our lives. You're not bad at all. You must have killed Gascoigne as well then. He was falling apart, I'm sure it had to be done. But try to keep your hands clean. A hunter should hunt beasts. Leave the hunting of hunters to me. <laughs> and she gives us the clap gesture. These are the two best sarcastic PvP gestures in the game. If you invade somebody and they just fucking spam their gun at you, and you kill them... Let me just give them a round of applause.